Invitation to the bowl season festivities. Today it's TCU and Texas on Raycom. Southwest Conference Football, and it's brought to you by Southwest Airlines, celebrating 20 years of providing everyday low fares and convenient flights to many exciting destinations. Also brought to you in part by NCNB, by Keystone, by Dr. Pepper, and by Exxon Phase 4 Gasoline. Umbrellas are out and the lights are on at Memorial Stadium in Austin this afternoon with the TCU Horn Frogs prepared to battle the Texas Longhorns. We welcome you to Austin, Dave Barnett along with Dave Rowe, and we think we have a unique matchup today for one reason. It's TCU coming in with the winning record. It's TCU coming in with the bowl hopes. And Dave, only three times in the last 34 years has TCU come into this game against Texas with a better record. And they're thinking today, if we can upset Texas, hey, we've got a good shot at a bowl. Well, they last went to a bowl seven years ago. Jim Wacker says seven wins over Division I opponents should be enough this year. If there's any justice in the world of intercollegiate athletics, yeah, if we go 7-3 and three with a chance to win at, at Houston and beat the University of Texas, uh, obviously, I think, uh, you know, it, it would only be right that we end up in a bowl. Now, they don't tell you that. You don't have any guarantees. But I think particularly with a new rule where you've got to have five, six wins against a Division One opponent, I don't see how they could leave us out. I think we would be a tremendously attractive bowl team. Well, he's in a bowl today, the Band-Aid Bowl. These are two extremely limited offenses because of injuries both ways. And the Texas story this year has really been uh, the story of their struggling offense. But if you look back to last year, the man they probably miss more than anybody is the kicker, Michael Pollock. Absolutely, Dave. The kicking game has been a disaster for Texas year, this year. They've only made seven of 16 field goals, and you can trace three of their losses directly to missed field goals. Now today, a walk-on, Craig Dickey, is going to kick. He's not on their depth chart. He's so far down that he's not even listed. He has very, very short range. And David McWilliams said to me, hey, if we get inside, outside the 20, we may even go for it on fourth down. That much more pressure on an outstanding Texas defense. However, they go against the fourth different starting quarterback TCU has had this year. Boy, and that's Darren Schultz. And don't you know he's under a lot of pressure. I have never seen a team be competitive with a fourth-team quarterback. They certainly don't want to see their fifth-team quarterback. They are 18-point underfrogs today. Texas trying to make it 24 in a row over TCU. And we'll return for the kickoff after this from Southwest Airlines. Time to rise and shine, fun seekers. Southwest Airlines fun fairs are back. Well, you waited so long for a fair to get so nice and long. Get out now, you really should fly. Light up the night. Southwest Airlines' new fun fares are so low. Want to see that again? Now you can fly just for the fun of it. About 50 years ago, folks out here needed help with insurance. And since Farm Bureau's whole purpose was to help, they organized insurance companies. From the outset, these companies were committed to being conservative. And the result has been a tradition of strength and stability respected across the country. Now, through the years, Farm Bureau has grown and added lots of innovative services, but that stability never changed. And stability is why you can trust Farm Bureau today. Check this out. Ouch! I'm sick of dating. You gotta take it. So much madness, you just can't take it. Hey, I'm going through this, I know what feels good. While the best thing's always so misunderstood. Just give me what the doctor ordered. Dr. Pepper. Just what the doctor ordered. Just give me a Dr. Pepper and we want it. Whoa, just what the doctor ordered. The taste is made to order. We love it. Dr. Pepper. 
the crowd still filing in at Memorial Stadium in Austin. They expected 60,000 in this stadium, which holds almost 78. Weather may limit that somewhat today. As you can see, the rain already collecting on the track surrounding the field. Temperature is no problem. Very comfortable, 72 degrees. The wind could be a factor, as it usually is here, 10 to 20 miles per hour out of the southeast, and we may very well get more rain in Austin this afternoon. But Bevo here, wind, rain, snow, shine, and Ted Barnhill ready to kick off for Texas. They will kick with the wind behind them here in the first quarter. And deep expecting the kick, Toby Morey on the left. And Anthony Hickman is the late addition to the kick return team number two that you saw on the right of your screen. Texas trying to get back up over 500 today. And a good deep kick, which Morey feels six yards deep. So the Frogs will start after the touchback at their own 20. And the fourth different starter at quarterback today. That's the first time that's happened in TCU football history. Darren Schultz, all those numbers, came after Shade and Vogler went out against A&M a week ago Thursday night. He had decent numbers, as you saw, 6 of 9 for 115. And along with Schultz, our NCND starting offensive lineup for TCU. Motkins, Lewis, Nowak gets the start for Blackwell at tight end. We do expect to see an injured Kelly Blackwell today. Up front, John Marsh, every week just about, has been the top blocker for the ball. And again, it's to Motkins, who finds the going cup around right end. Might have lost a yard. Shane Drenet was the first horn to get there against Motkins, the junior running back from Marlin. The NCN base starting defensive lineup for Texas with James Patton perhaps even out stripping Drenet on the front line. That's Chris Rapp, his first start at middle linebacker. Michael Padgett out for the year with a knee injury. Lance Gunn, a Thornton nominee. And one of the top safeties in college football leads this Texas secondary. On second and 11, Schultz on the roll. And he'll pick up maybe five on the 24-yard line. And on the tackle was Boone Powell, the strong side linebacker. The Southwest Airlines team must today for TCU. Well, first of all, the Texas defense, Dave, has only allowed 19 points all year in the second half. To win, TCU must score early. Too many teams that can come in there and try to play their four-team quarterback. That's not going to work. They have got to keep they've got to keep Schultz healthy. And BC Power, that stands for the two defensive ends, Bolden and Collins. And they are powerful. Schultz under pressure. And incomplete. Not sure who that was intended for. They had Angel Alvarez and Stephen Shipley both in that left flat. And it is three and out for Darren Schultz and TCU. Number 17. So Trey Beacon on to punt. Sophomore from Fort Worth Southwest High School. Has averaged 36 yards per kick this year. And deep for Texas at his 41-yard line is Willie Mac Garza. Normally it's Grady Kavnis, but we see Garza, the junior from Refurio, back today. Well, Texas should get excellent field position. They should get it in TCU territory. Well, the Jacks came and might have distracted Beacon enough to make that one go off the side of the foot. And a poor kick, which will be marked out of bounds at the TCU 43-yard line. That one goes 19 yards for Beacon. The Texas offense, Peter Gardere, the junior from Houston Lee. 50% passer, four touchdowns, but 10 interceptions, his biggest problem this year. And Gardere, who had his bell rung in the second quarter at Houston last week, finished 7 to 14 for 145 yards and an interception. The give to Butch Hadnot, who gets the start and steps his way between right tackle and tight end for a gain to the 39 yard line. Hadnot. As has been the case all year, bothered by the ankle again today. He's in the backfield with Childers. Drift the tight end. Duke and Neal get the start at wideout. Up front, Sam Adams gets the start. Scott Gooch out with a knee nerve injury. And Adams, the junior from Baytown, Sterling goes at left guard. Duke had not three. Quick penetration by TCU. And Gardner may have bobbled that snap. And then uh, got the handle again and pushed forward to the 39-yard line. Bring up third and five for Texas. 
the TCU defensive starters. With Bolden and Collins, as Dave said, two of the top defensive ends in college football. The linebackers, Hines Smith and Anderson in a homecoming. He's from Austin LBJ High School. They're leading tackler with 96 for the year. The secondary is led by Hickman. Four interceptions, 68 tackles, an awful high number for a quarterback. Gardner with time on third down, and the inbounds, the catch made inside the 30 by Kenny Neal. That will be enough for a Texas first down if a flag in the Texas backfield is against TCU. It's not. It's clipping Texas. Well, and that's what Texas has done all year on offense. They pick up the first down. They've got a flag. They look around for the yellow hanky lane there on the ground, and it just has just been a problem all year long. Boy, Dale will march him back 15. This is not an offense that can afford mistakes. No, they, they have a hard time overcoming mistakes. Now, they're going to have a first down on the, about the 30, 31-yard line. Now, they're facing, what, third down uh, and about 25 yards, and they're in their own territory. Well, they go from their 39. They were going to be on the TCU 29. So, in effect, that's about a 32-yard difference as they come up on third down. Neal is wide right, popular screen, Duke inside of him. And down there, to Hadnock. Short gain to the 42, Texas will punt. And a promising first drive goes nowhere for the Horns. Let's check their Southwest Airlines team must. Well, Dave, Texas offense does virtually nothing in the first period. They've only scored nine points all year. The offense also needs to give the defense a little break by scoring more points and maybe keeping them off the field a little bit. And the key to this game for Texas defense all year has been to get pressure on the quarterback, and the key today is to get to Schultz. They've got 34 sacks by those up front people. Kelly McClanahan with a good kick. Goes up spiral, and Anthony Hickman fumbles it. And it is picked up by Norman Watkins for Texas at the 17. Dave, Anthony Hickman fielding his 68th kick in two years. That is the first kick he has ever dropped for TCU. Well, he took his eyes off the ball. He looked down the field to, see, to watch him. See him take his eyes off the ball. Comes right down in front of him. It's a little bit wet because of the surface. But right there, you just got to dive back on it. Heads up play by Texas. Again, see, he takes his eyes off and looks downfield a little bit. And he just does not look the ball all the way in. Tried to catch it against his body, too. Watkins, the freshman from Irving with the recovery at the 18. On the sweep comes Hat Not. TCU worked all week to do just this, limit Texas going around in. And that one's going to lose about six yards. Scott Hines was the first horn frog to arrive there. Well, you've got to blame this on Hat Not. He has got to turn the ball up. You just can't keep on running to the sideline. He made no effort to turn up. And I'll tell you, that ankle really has to bother him, Dave. We've seen shades of him being the, the greatness that he had last year uh, in that early Tech game that we did, but he's nowhere near that today. Second half against Tech, he had 167 yards, re-injured the ankle against Houston. And on a wet field today to boot. Pressure from Collins, controlled over the middle. Curtis Thrift will go to the 12, and it'll be third and four as Reggie Anderson makes his first tackle. I asked Lynn Amity, their offensive coordinator yesterday, I said, how come we haven't seen much of Curtis Thrift? 6'5", 248 pounds. He said, you watch him tomorrow. We're going to go to him a lot. He'll play every down today, barring further injury. He's been one of the few healthy people Texas has had to count on every week. They'll need five. They mark it at the 13. This following the TCU fumbled punt. On the option, Gardner, late pitch, and not inside the 10. Will be very close for the first and goal. Where they mark it, he has the first down. Boy, and with Gardner's ability to pitch that ball late, he just, oh, he almost made a huge mistake, but he comes away with a great play. Coming down, now watch, he's going to be in the grasp and just kind of flips it out. 
he doesn't even see the ball, but he knows that Hadnot is there. That's a good pitch, good play. Brad Smith, TCU's middle linebacker, forced to pitch by Gardere. Hadnot with 166 of those yards two weeks ago against Texas Tech, and they will measure. As always, glad to have those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. First quarter in Austin, scoreless. Texas trying to cash in the fumble punt, and they do have first and goal at the seven. A lot of people don't realize how much an ankle injury can set back a running back. He does not have the ability to plant and make that hard cut where you drive off the line. He just has to kind of nimbly come out there, just kind of gingerly plant and try to run around the outside. He's, if he's at 50, 60 percent, we're, we're lucky today. Justin McLemore is in the game. He's wide right. Up the middle goes Shane Shilder. And the redshirt freshman from Clyde Oak in Houston has never been brought down for a loss this year. That's his 30th carry. He has averaged four per carry. They give him the five, second and goal. Well, if I'm Texas in this situation, I'm going to play power football. I'm going to go right up the gut. You know, run hat, not straight ahead. I'm going to run shoulders. But I'm going to play power football. I'm not going to try to go wide. Defensive tackle has been a black hole for TCU. They are most banged up at those positions. Gardner to the fade for Kenny Neal and out of the end zone. We showed you Gardner's numbers in this game last year. Four touchdown passes. Two came to Keith Cash, who along with his twin brother Kerry used to be the favorite targets on that pattern. But they go 6-4. Neal at 6-3 has not been that reliable a target on the fade. Well, he certainly has not. I asked Gardner yesterday, I said, how, what do you do to warm up when you go back inside and you come out? How many times do you throw it? He said, oh, probably 15, 20 times. I wonder whether he is not warming up properly when he comes back out to get ready to play the game because he usually throws his first five or six passes poorly. This one to the corner of the end zone, incomplete. Macklemore open, just a second. Ball went on target. Steve Reed had the coverage. And Texas still has not scored a first quarter touchdown. Craig Dickey will get his shot at winning the kicking job. Jason Ziegler re-injured the hamstring last week at Houston. They gave Jason Post another shot. He couldn't hang on to the job, so from 22 yards out, Dickey, the sophomore from Austin Westlake, with a shot, and he is right down the middle. Texas 3-0, 8.56 in the first quarter here in Austin. How to improve your home involves some difficult decisions. You know, we could use a bigger kitchen. Nuh-uh. A new bath. Uh-uh. Kitchen. A new bath. We could use a... At NCNB, we don't think financing should be one of them. Okay, a bath. Upstairs. Upstairs? That's why we've set up a loan information line. Call with your questions or stop by and see a loan specialist. Then tell us what's on your mind. Okay, I got it. A garage. Uh-uh. A deck. A garage. 1-800-ASK-NCNB. Sweetheart. The loan source. Yes? I want a deck. In the art of making beer, no one has explored the essence of refreshment like Coors. And now we've discovered a way to double chill a beer and to lock in the refreshing dry cold of the Rockies. The result is a unique cold sensation and a finish as clean as ice. Introducing double chilled Coors Dry. Only Coors does it. Coors Dry has it. Cold from the start, clean to the finish. Coors Dry. Feel the chill. Excuse me, do you always change your own motor oil? Every 3,000 miles, just like clockwork. Tell me, what do you do with it? Well, let me show you. <laughs> just change this. This is last year's. That's the 85 Mustang. That's my wife's old Buick. Boy, could that car fly. Well, why not bring your used motor oil to any participating Exxon station, and we'll have it recycled through our used motor oil recycling program. Stop by any Exxon station for information on locations and restrictions. 72, 63, 65. <laughs> Well, it's his job for now. Greg Dickey has given Texas a rare first quarter lead. With that, they've scored a total of 12 first quarter points this year. That is unbelievable. We talk about a team that sputters. 
in the, they, they sputter all game, but especially in that first period. That's just unbelievable. 12 points an entire year. Barnhill with the much stronger leg. Accuracy to get a shot at the field goal and PAT job, and he bounces this one to Mori and another touchback. Aaron Schultz getting the start at quarterback, but he is the leading tackler on TCU's kick coverage team this year. We asked Wacker about that. We did take him off the kickoff team. That's what my specialty team coach said. Says, Coach, the worst thing is we're going to lose a hammer on coverage. He's our best guy. But a hammer put it all in perspective. Darren says, Coach, the good thing is if I throw an interception, I know I know how to tackle a guy. <laughs> now that's confidence for you, isn't it? Jim Wacker, as always, able to find something to be optimistic about with quarterback number four in. I wonder if he ever, keeps for two yards. I wonder if he ever has a bad day. I mean, you come in here, you, you're on your fourth team quarterback, your fifth team quarterback. The uh, the SIDs don't have, have virtually no information on, and he's just as uh, wonderful a person to talk to, just like he just was won a thousand dollars on something. A lot of coaches, you'd be hiding the razor blades. <laughs> Never necessary with Jim Wacker. Hopkins got one. Dickens in motion out of the backfield. And uh, that one intended for Kelly Blackwell. Bruce Gribbs it all. He comes in on the second possession for TCU with the flag down to the backfield. I think that's going to be holding against TCU, which is going to compound their, their poor field position. Patton looked like he was rushing right up the gut and had just a straight shot. It is against the Frogs. We'll keep you updated all day on the goings-on in Tallahassee, Florida, number one and number two, and a touchdown by Florida State, overcoming an early 7 to nothing Miami lead as we check our Dr. Pepper scoreboard for the first time. Holding, offense, complete second there. How much do you pull back from what would normally be your game plan with Schultz in? Well, if you've got your second team quarterback, I would say probably maybe 15, 20 percent. But when you're looking at a fourth team quarterback that before this week has not even taken a snap, they'll be lucky to have 30, 40 percent of their offense in. Out of the eye, Michael Jackson is the fullback, and this is Derek Cullors. They love this true freshman from Lake Highlands in Dallas. He's their second leading rusher. That's the 64th carry of the year. Seven touchdowns and 4.9 yards per carry. Both top numbers for TCU. Real sleeper. Played only 11 games in two years in high school after he transferred from Dallas Sunset to Lake Highlands. But he averaged 9.7 per carry, and that got Wacker's attention and made him a prize freshman. That one intended for Shipley, and it will be fourth and 18. And Schultz has not been close on the, no. any of these early passes. No, he has not. And they're trying to keep the passing game very short on him and keep those little crossing patterns so he can find a target wide open. It's not a complex pattern, but he has not been able to find anyone yet. Last time we saw Beacon, he went off the side of the foot for 19 yards. Garza expecting this one at the Frog, 46. And the Horns play for the return. This one not much prettier. And it'll die at the 44. This one goes only 32 yards. And the field position game solidly in favor of Texas here in the first quarter, already leading 3-0. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game. Stay with us and keep that in mind along with us. Midway first quarter, a chance for Texas to, uh, you hesitate to say blow this one wide open, <laughs> oh, yeah. but with the limited prospects for TCU's offense, a 10-point lead would be huge. Well, you have got to capitalize when you get field position like this, and they've had two excellent shots. The first one they did capitalize on, got that field goal. Now we see another flag. Would you expect to see a lot of these today with so many new faces and with Texas out of the bowl picture? Concentration. Yes, 
Dale first there. Yeah, a lot of things happen. What happens is the cadence is a little bit different on offense for TCU. He doesn't call the signals the same. When you line up, you've got so many different changes. You look across, and the guy next to you is, is strange. So, yes, you look for a lot of a lot of procedure penalties. This one goes against Texas. And on the give, it is Roderick Walker. First down to the TCU 32. Tony ran the strong safety with the tackle after a 17-yard gain for Roderick Walker, redshirt freshman from Irving Nimitz. Well, this is power of football. They're going to pull the both the guard and the tackle. They're going to kick out and Shafee is 76. He just comes in there and just dives over to get that helmet on there. Excellent play selection. Here's the 32, first and 10. Still out of the eye. Walker again. And this time, ready for the role of Scott Hines, the strong side linebacker. With the injuries to have not in the Phil Brown, in normal circumstances, Roderick Walker would be a showcase this year, but he's been hurt too. Well, everyone's been hurt for this Texas offense. That's one of the problems that's really hurt them is that they have not been able to practice every week with the A-back in the A-back position and the B-back in the B-back position. That one went nowhere, second and ten. This time they fake to Walker and Gardner rolling away from Bolden. Wide open is Shane Childers, who will have the first down inside the 20. Now, I talked about Gardner getting off to a slow start. He's not off to a slow start. His passes are pretty good right now. I don't know what they said to him, but he has started off strong. Even the passes he didn't complete on that early first drive, they were right on target, so he has come out pretty strong. They're fine if they just get through the first quarter. They dominate the other three quarters. And a 500 record, but 48 more points than they've allowed this year. That's what adds to the frustration. Walker frustrated here into a loss of three. Smith and Hines from linebacker. Brad Smith, a junior from Houston St. Thomas, their second leading tackler behind Anderson. That one lost two, second and 12. Lamore back in. He's wide right. Duke is wide left. Gardner for McLemore inside the 10. First and goal. Will turn in in front of Anthony Hickman. Well, you can't get that much cushion on a good wide receiver because this is just a post pattern and the cornerback isn't even in the coverage picture. He's giving too much ground. When he turns in, you'll see McLemore turn in. See how far the coverage had to come back up once the ball was thrown. McLemore with outstanding speed, champion hurdler at Waxahachie High School. That's his 10th catch of his freshman year. And TCU will burn a timeout. This with 5 minutes 33 seconds in the first quarter. And McWilliams will hope to come up along with offensive coordinator Lynn Amity with the first touchdown in the first quarter this year. They're looking for more five and a half minutes in the first quarter. Will we finally see a touchdown well, in the first quarter? I'll tell you, they're in great position. If they're going to score in the first quarter, this is the drive. It better be. <laughs> After the TCU timeout, first and goal at the eight. With double wideouts left, McLemore inside of Duke. And Roderick Walker, the lone setback. Childress slot left, it is Walker. And it is tough going up the middle. Got hit immediately by Alex Molina. Defensive tackle from Delray, Florida. One of the many walking wounded to tackle for TCU. His problem of bruised right shoulder, which has kept him out to this year several games. He hasn't practiced in three weeks. Other defensive tackle, Royal West, hasn't practiced in two weeks. And Thomas Lewis, normally the starter, banged up and playing today. On the option pitch, Roderick Walker in a foot race. He loses it to Tony Rand, the strong safety, and it's third and goal. Okay, I take it back. They're not going to score a touchdown on this drive. Gosh, they just keep on just not coming up with productive yards. When you try to go wide, you have got to cut the corner. You've got to cut the corner down. He just comes right up there, bam, makes the tackle. 
and who led TCU to 110 tackles last year. Makes it third and goal at the 10. And Gardner, incomplete. Macklemore arguing that Hickman made contact, and no one even reaching for a flag, and same old story. Well, I don't think Hickman really interfered with him. What happened is Hickman had inside position. It was almost as if he knew he was going to run that type of pattern. He had great inside position and kept kept him, just knocked him off his path. Hey, Craig Dickey may be a hero today. Well, it looks like he'll get a lot of chances. This is from the 17, a 27-yard effort. And he is good, barely. But he is two for two. For two, he's number 22, and so is the wide receiver from Waxahachie, Justin McLemore. So we will uh, advise you of that if you haven't already noticed it. It's six to nothing, four minutes and 16 seconds in the first quarter. And new return people for TCU. Michael Jackson and Mike Houston. This is Jackson at the two-yard deep mark. And Brian Hill is three for three, forcing touchbacks. First attempt for TCU from their own. Latest drive goes nine plays, 35 yards after the four punt by Beacon. And uh, Schultz will once again try to get enough time to deliver something close to a completion. He has not been close so far today. They have not had uh, anything in the way of field position, unlike Texas. Monkins with no act in front of him, and he's chased out by Tommy Jeter. This Texas defense, sixth in the country in total defense, third in scoring defense. If they had any offense, they could be good. James Patton talked about their frustration. Well, I don't think you can get down on someone. They're, you know, they're giving it their all, and they're trying their best. And just things haven't worked out for them this year. They've been a little unlucky. Uh, kind of disappointed because I know they can play. You know, I go against them in practice, and I know they're just as good as any of the offenses we played. So more of a sense of disappointment instead of uh, getting down on them and so forth. Second and 12, and this one good to Michael Jackson. He's across the 30, he'll have a TCU first down at the 34, chased down by Mark Berry after a gain of 16. Boy, now that's got to help Schultz. That's got to give him a little bit of bounce in that huddle, a little bit of confidence. There was a nice swing pattern to the outside. It's a very safe pass. Not much chance of it being intercepted. Jackson just turns up field, picks up good yardage. This is their best offensive production. Career numbers pretty much only against the Aggies. He played because of injuries last year at College Station. And uh, this year at Fort Worth against a &M. They try Derek Colors up the middle. Number 31, Derek Colors. Peter again on the tackle along with Chris Rapp, the middle linebacker. Peter, number 99. Colors this year has had some big scoring games. Could have gone to Oklahoma. Could have gone to Oklahoma State. State of the Metroplex. And Jim Wacker's happy about that. Second and ten. Second down from the 34 and a half. Schultz on play action. A looper intended for Nowak, who was running step for step with Boone Powell. And so far, the tight ends alternating by series. Nowak started. Second series, we saw Blackwell. Injuries and all. Now Nowak again. And that was one of the coverage situations that they told us they were going to do because of Blackwell and Nowak's downfield patterns. They were going to put a linebacker. In this case, it's Boone Powell. He will just be with them all day long. Look how heavily wrapped those ribs are. Boy, what a competitor. That young man is a real football player. He squats 500 pounds. I mean, that is a... That's some, you don't think of a wide receiver squatting 500 pounds. Or even a tight end. 
on the blitz, Curl came, and this one way into the Texas bench, intended for Shipley, covered by Barry, and again the Frogs will have to punt. This time they at least got one first down. Well, and you see right there, Mopkins comes over and talks to him, says that pass is not going to work. You're going to have to throw those short little crossing patterns, pick up the backs out in the flat, but you're not going to be able to go deep. He really doesn't have the strength in his arm to go deep. Beacon will again kick to Garza. This time it is 31. And Texas will again play for the return. At least this one is a spiral on one hop. Garza spins away from the first hit by Greg Evans. Still going. And finally he is corralled at the 36-yard line. It's Beacon's best punt so far. It's 32 yards and a return of three. Rampant amphibians. Wacker in there, he's telling them, he said, listen, we have got to get some offense. Everybody's got to hold their blocks, everybody's got to keep them out, give this quarterback a little bit of time to find his wide receiver. Had not back in, he started a tailback. Gardier on play action, had Duke open over the middle, has to scramble, and now settles to kneel at midfield. Steve Reed with the tackle. A sharp first quarter by Gardere's early season standard. And uh, an injured frog back at the 35, and that might be Royal West, the defensive tackle who had already been bothered by a sprained ankle. Ninety-seven it is, the redshirt freshman from Winona, Texas. You know, Dave, in talking to Texas about their wide receivers and all the problems they've had, they've had so many drop balls at critical situations where a completion, like in the Arkansas game, that would have won the football game when they threw that they threw a pass to Kenny Neal and he dropped it. Derek Duke has dropped several passes. And that's just a lack of concentration. You have got to look that ball all the way in and do the first thing first, and that's catch the football. Secondly, put it away. Don't try to run with it before you catch it. They mark Neal at the 49, and uh, everybody on the front line for TCU got off early that time, and they're pointing at Adams and Boyd, the guards for Texas. We'll see if Lloyd Dale agrees. He does in his first and 15, along with Dale, the rest of the crew today. Lynn Amity totaled up the drops last year to this year. Last year, all season, 15 drop passes for Texas. This year, in the first five games alone, they had 17 drops, and seven of those 17 were on third down. That tells a great deal of the story of 91 for this Texas offense. At night. Met immediately by Roosevelt Collins, 48, the right defensive end from Shreveport, with an assist from Brad Smith. Well, you know, I watch, and during the game, I'll watch Kenny Neal go out on the pattern. He's got great speed. He'll make the circus catch, just make a wonderful catch. The next time he'll come out on a crossing pattern, it'll hit him right in the hands, right in the stomach, and bam, he'll drop it. That's what makes me believe that it's just a lack of concentration. He certainly doesn't lack talent. That one intended for Derek Duke. And Rand might have had a hand on that one. Tight coverage on the turn, and it will be third and 16. Guard there, his bell was rung at Houston last week. Shook it off, looked fine. We saw him working out yesterday. Hines out. Nickelback Edward Galavides. Number 49 is in. On third and 16. And this one deep for Neal. It is too deep. He was open. He had gone past Reed. And Galavides late arriving as the deep zone man. And Gardner missed a wide open touchdown prospect here. Well, this, this replay will show you the ability that Kenny Neal has. He's down on the bottom. Now watch. He just burns the corner. He's wide open. The pass is a little bit long, but that shows you. He has great speed, great talent. He can catch the football, but he just does not do it consistently. 
So Kelly McClanahan will kick for the second time to Anthony Hickman. Last time, Hickman fumbled for the first time in his career as a return man. That'll be a clip on TCU. Hickman's return to the 24 will be brought back. The kick was a 45-yarder. And the Frogs picked a bad place to clip right in front of the side jet. Well, he really tried not to clip on the play. You know, the old, uh, the old saying, if you can read their names, don't block them. And he really did. He tried to hold up at the last second, but he made contact. Rayford Rattan, the man caught for the clip. And uh, the most miserable field position yet for Wacker and the Frogs with 59 seconds in the first quarter. Already trailing 6-0. On the run back, first and ten. As we go around the Southwest Conference, our Raycom Weekly updates, Arkansas Athletic Director Frank Royals will have his heart condition checkup in two weeks. He has been bothered enough by stress this year that his doctors have advised him not to show up for games. He's had to watch him at home on TV. And we wish him the best. As Motkins... Keeps to the eight-yard line. Rapp and Powell on the tackle at Texas A&M. Bucky Richardson comes into tonight's game against Arkansas, needing 11 yards to break Marty Aiken's Southwest Conference career quarterback rushing record. A&M has scored on their opening possession every game this year. They are the diametric opposite of this Texas offense. If they've had any problems, they've come after halftime, and they haven't had many problems even then at A&M. Still a very underrated 13th in the nation. First audible for Schultz, and he will call time. Might have been worried about the play clock running down. That's the second time out already called by TCU, and it's with 17 seconds in the first quarter. Well, what Jim what Jim Wacker saw was he saw his quarterback try to call an audible quick and then get confused, and that's really frustrating for Jim Wacker because he has a very, very technical offense, and he knows his quarterback is having a tough time running. What Schultz saw was one of the linebackers faked up in the line. He immediately tried to call an audible, and they were the whole offense was in confusion. Well, at Texas Tech, our congratulations to the Wingos. They tried to time this for the birth to come during an open date, and they just a little early couldn't quite hold on, but Brittany Wingo born and uh, Matt Wingo, the proud father, expected to uh, not miss a game. Our congratulations to the Wingos. And at Baylor, they expect to accept a Copper Bowl bid, and they expect to play either Indiana or BYU. Trevor Cobb continues to lead the nation in rushing at nearly 160 yards per game at Rice. Next year, they'll really push him for the Heisman. This year, they hope he wins the Doak Walker Award for the nation's top running back. Well, I'll tell you what really impresses me about Cobb is that he is as good on his 25th, 26th, and 27th carry as he is on his first carry. On second and seven, colors to the ten on what should be the final play of the first quarter. Dogs will settle for anything in the way of a first down when we get underway in the second quarter. Their worst fears basically have been realized against this Texas defense in quarter number one. Six-nothing Texas. to KRLD because I'd like to stay informed. Because I'm in business and I don't think that anybody today in business or making any kind of investments or buying a home or doing anything can afford not to be informed. I pride myself in knowing what's going on and I think that, um, you know, it shows you're an educated person. I guess I'm a curious person. I like to know what's going on. How can anyone have time to really sit down and read the paper every day? I don't know. I wish I did. But I have KRLD and that's really all I need. If you're looking for a way to beat those old car blues, your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. Now's the right time for year-end savings on selected 91 Isuzu cars and trucks, like the versatile Isuzu Trooper LS, priced at up to $1,800 off during the Isuzu for You sale. Info stylist, pick up Trooper, rodeos too. Your Isuzu dealer's got the right Isuzu for you. 
Save on a trooper at your local Dallas Fort Worth Metroplex Isuzu dealer. At Magic, rent to own fine furniture and we'll add to own stylish lamps and tables from just $2 a week. At Magic, rent to own name brand appliances and we'll add to own a handy microwave oven for just $4 a week. At Magic, rent to own quality electronics and we'll add to own a remote VCR for just $5 a week. Rent to own where you add to own for less. Only at Magic. Quality worth renting. Quality worth owning. Call Magic today. Back in Austin, Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe. We begin the second quarter with TCU facing a third and six at their own 10-yard line. A couple of first quarter field goals by Craig Dickey, the latest to audition for the kicking job at Texas. But, uh, again, for the 12th consecutive game, Texas unable to get a touchdown in the first period. Five wideouts on third down. Ball deflected and incomplete. Intended for Angel Alvarez. And Darren Schultz now one for six for 16 yards. The overall numbers in the first quarter look this way. 71-27 in total yardage. And at nine and a half to five and a half minutes in possession, the key numbers. That's not enough yards for any team. 21, 27 yards, 71's not even, especially with the field position that Texas has had. They've been in TCU's territory all day. They put the rush on Beacon. They don't get to him. And it's Garza from his 47. That's right where he'll be stopped after a kick of 43 yards. Texas average field position of the first quarter, the TCU 42. This is one of their worst starting points today. Frogs, by contrast, average taking over their own 17. Average yardage on first down of the first quarter, Texas four yards. TCU point two. That is one fifth of one yard they averaged on first down. Childers spins off the initial hit. You might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. The ends closed in a hurry. Bolden 91 and Collins 48. Reggie Anderson on the bottom of the pile. I often wonder how good this Texas defense would be statistically if they had any kind of an offense. If they had an offense that was running up and down the field controlling the ball, they would be just, their statistics would be unbelievable. Yeah, a lot of games, they're on the field 60% of the time. And to be third in the nation in scoring defense, just amazing. Hadnot finds a hole. Butch Hadnot will go for the Texas touchdown. 52 yards. Texas coaches would tell you we've had an offense this year and that's our offense but he's been too banged up to do what he just did and what a difference he could have made healthy this year oh boy what we saw in the Texas Tech game is what we just saw on that run I could tell at the tail end of that drive and the tail end of that run that his ankle's still bothering him boy when he bursts into the clear he just turns it on Gardner with seven seconds on the play clock as Texas goes for two. And he will loop it intended for Childers. Perfectly timed hit by Steve Reed in the corner of the end zone and 12-0 Texas it remains. Dave, on this play they pull the tackle and the guard. Now watch, they're going to kick out. Now watch Hadlock read that block and cut right back up the gut. Now once he sees the safety in the corner coming over, he knows it's just a sprint. You see him straighten up that back. On the tail end of this, you're still going to see him kind of limp into the end zone. The offensive line does a good job here. They seal, they kick off, kick to the outside, and he just runs right up the middle. Calvin Jones, number 11, the only man with an angle. Good corral, had not, and it's 12 nothing. We're back after this from Southwest Airlines. Had not's third touchdown run of the year. We've seen them all. Two came in the second half a couple of weeks ago against Tech. This one from 52, they have all been long runs, just like that one. 
And Ted Barnhill will kick into the wind for the first time. Dribbler picked up at the 25-yard line and returned to 10 yards to the 35 by Sad Jackson, a backup linebacker. In Tallahassee, they have reached the half. Miami led early 7 to nothing. They trailed by 3 at the half. Clemson by 13 over Miami at the half. And Indiana by 3 at Ohio State in the first half. East Carolina has been tremendous all year. First and 10 by the scrimmage, the 34 and half. And Florida apparently headed for the Sugar Bowl. Schultz play action. Jeter gives chase, so does Trinette. Got it off, incomplete for Blackwell. Well covered again by Boone Powell. The latest touches uh, Texas scoring drive, such as it was, two plays, and on the second one had not outraced Calvin Jones and Anthony Hickman. Just watching Kelly Blackwell run that pattern. I'll tell you, he's not at 50%, Dave. Those ribs, when you when you separate ribs and cartilage as sharp as he's looked so far. Motkin trying to cut away from Curl. Nothing doing. Did his knee hit at the 45? It did. And it was Chris Rapp who finally wrapped up Motkin. Well, the sign of a good defense is when you get people to the ball, and that's what Texas does so well. When he tries to go wide, watch, nobody gets knocked down. Everybody's up there just running, sliding along the line. There's nowhere to go out there. You can't fake them. You can't turn back inside because look at all the burnt orange jerseys coming. They looked at their numbers last week at Houston and had to be scratching their heads. How did they not win that game? Houston managed only 282 total yards. That's their low in 45 games. That they won by nine. Well, you tell me who that's intended for. Shipley and Colors were 15 yards in front of where that Well, he was trying to call an audible on the line, and uh, he just confused his two wideouts. They had no idea what pattern they were going to run. So it'll be third and 20. Boy, and someone with a, a coach, with an offense like Jim Wacker has had, up and down the field, passing, five receivers on patterns. You don't think that's frustrating? You can't even run hardly a pattern? All out rush. Schultz gets away at first, and then Bo Robinson at the 44 with the sack of Darren Schultz. Texas coming in, averaging four sacks per game. Well, I want to tell you, I've done football for a long time, and I don't remember ever seeing a better defensive front four as a unit than this Texas unit. Their front four linemen have got over 200 tackles, 34 sacks coming into this game. You always find one or two guys that are real good, but you rarely find four. Bubba Jacks again, close to blocking Beacon's kick. This one gets a big TCU hop and goes 56 yards. We pause briefly for station identification. This is the Raycom Network. Memorial Stadium in Austin, Dave Barnett and Dave Rowe, 12-0 Texas, 12.05 in the first half. They begin at their 20, they send Duke and Neal wide right, Duke the inside receiver, and Hadnoff the lone setback, Adrian Walker in, he's slot right, and here comes Hadnoff. Just one for 52, this one goes 12 yards, Evans and Rattan on the tackle. Is Hadnot just that type of guy who has got to get loose and uh, do a three series before he really has his rhythm down? Well, that 52-yard run really boosted his confidence, especially with that ankle. And he is starting to warm up, but they told us that they didn't even know if he was going to start this game. He certainly has had been productive in this first half. Out of the eye this time, and Gardier will turn it up for a couple. And may wish he hadn't. Himes and Thomas Lewis on the tackle. Dave, I get the opinion, just the feeling that 
If Texas doesn't make a mistake and turn the football over, the TCU cannot drive against them. They're not going to drive the ball 70, 80 yards. They only have one first down so far in this game. So the TCU has to rely upon the turnover, the mistake, the fumble, something like that to get a good scoring range. Upset right there in the making in the second quarter with Virginia Tech adding to their lead over East Carolina. The action fake was to had not. Open is Neal in TCU territory at the 48. 19-yard pickup and Neal having a pretty good first half. And there is a, another example of the talent that Neal has. This is a curl pattern. Watch the adjustment he makes to come to the backside to catch it. The ball's thrown behind him. Plant, come all the way back, catches the ball high. If you were going to coach a wide receiver, you'd say, that's exactly how I want you to catch it. Use your hands, catch it away from your body. Now, now what he'll do normally is he'll come down and he'll have one thrown to him and he'll drop it. Right there, again for Neal, and the wounded quail held up in the air long enough for interference to be called. I think if that ball is not deflected, there's no interference, but it stayed up there so long it looked like Hickman and Galavis both made the early contact with Neal. I thought for a minute Gardere was hurt on that play. The ball slipped out of his hand and it fluttered going downfield. So not deflected, you don't think? No, I think it just slipped out of his hand. Perhaps we can see it on this replay. But I thought it just slipped out of his hand. Yep. He took a crunch. That's interference. Defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Hickman, you could see with the back turn, and he expects this one to be delivered at normal time. If it had been, it would have been a perfectly timed hit prior. Absolutely. If that ball is a spiral, a tight spiral thrown in there with any velocity, he's going to time it perfectly. But that ball was so high and fluttering, the wind just kept it up, and he just didn't time it well. was a lot of scrimmage to the 33 yard line. First and 10 at the 33. McLemore checks in for Neal. Goes wide left. Duke is right. Childers back in at fullback. As Hatton again picks his way up the middle inside the 30. Middle linebacker Brad Smith. PCU's second leading tackler on the stop. Well, he got a late start as a freshman. Kept him on ice until the Oklahoma game. Then they unleashed him. We've talked about his uh, physical limitations this year. His next two years should be interesting. Oh, well, he really should, and he, I promise you, he will be in that weight room working on that ankle as soon as he gets to the offseason. It's a block from Childers. And got away from the high tackle attempt by Greg Evans for a first down at the 21. Calvin Jones, number 11, finally on the stop. And Evans, pretty big hitter, but not big enough to wrap him up high and finish the tackle. Well, Roosevelt Collins is one of those bookends for TCU. He's played, just had a marvelous year. Now, what he has to do, he has to play the quarterback, make, make him pitch. Now you've got to have run support. Once that pitch is made and he does a good job, now you've got to have the safety. There's Evans way back there. He's too far back. He's got to come up and play that play a little stronger. Hadnot with a breather. Rodgers Walker into the game and off left tackle with squeeze to the 18. And Wacker looking at a possible 19 point deficit. Roosevelt Collins made the TCU stop. Well, a game like this even tests his seemingly boundless optimism. You hear what Wacker said right there? Turnover time, turnover time. So that's what he's got to be thinking. We've got to get this football back. We can't go down 19 points because I don't know if he can score 19 points in the current with the current quarterback situation. Well, you sure wouldn't think so. Gardier with Keith. And Smith knocks him down at the 12. That would be close. But probably about a yard shy for the first and bring up third and short. Well, one thing about it, I can tell you, David McWilliams is over there saying we got two tries to make this two yards because he's not going to go for a field goal in this position. He's thinking touchdown all the way. Last week, the critical fumble on fourth and one at the Houston 14. Never considered kicking the field goal, which would have put Texas up by four. Adrian Walker fumbled on a Houston blitz. 
With Ziegler healthy, he kicks it. They go up by four, and that might have been enough. This is Roderick Walker to the sixth, first and goal. Curtis Strip, what a nice block he throws from his tight end position. We talked about him being the big tight end, but he just does a great job of driving off and staying with him. Keep those feet driving. Boy, that is a marvelous block for a tight end. That's exactly what you want. Senior out of Lampasas. Will uh, probably leave the job as Jason Willis in next year. This is the best extended drive by Texas so far. Their first and goal at the seven. Roderick Walker with a block from Shea Shafee before Collins caught him from behind at the five. And this is the depth. We haven't even seen Phil Brown today, but this is the depth Texas thought they had coming into this season. They could have a tag team at tailback. Had not both Walkers and Brown. They thought they were four deep at that spot. Most of the time, they haven't been. Gardner will keep, leap at the one, and step in for the touchdown. just kind of leaped over him. Dickey's extra point is good at 19 nothing. It was Greg Evans that Gardner was able to avoid. Watch Gardner come down the line now. He's going to keep the ball. And watch right here. There's the tackler with the head down. He just steps over him and just, just crumbles into the end zone. 7-14 in the half. All Texas so far. and back deep to wait for Barnhill's kick. Morey from the 12. And Jeff Higgins and Pascal Waddy combined to send Morey out of bounds. The 10-play drive, 80 yards. That's the, uh, the best consistency we've seen so far from the Texas offense. Previous touchdown came on the big 52-yard uh, game breaker by had not. And it's also 19 0 in Knoxville. Florida is still manhandling Kentucky. Shipley, Alvarez, and Jackson all wide left. As Schultz fakes to Motkins and overthrows Michael Jackson. Only Matt Garza had the coverage. Well, the problem that I see with Schultz is his delivery. He's not throwing a strike. He's just kind of letting the ball float up there, and that's not the way you throw that pattern with the running back coming out of the backfield. You drill it to him. He's just kind of laying it up. You know, one of the questions I asked Jim Wacker yesterday, Dave, was would Leon Clay help the all-season? What's your record? He didn't hesitate. No, he certainly did. He said 10-1, 9-2 at worst. He said they didn't think they would beat A&M because they have a great team. He said, but we'd have been in the dance with all the rest of them. Monkins got that pitch well into his own uh, backfield and manages the 23. Should be third and about 11. Lance Wilson made the hit along with Chris Rapp. Well, one of the people is that Chris Rep that's got to fill some big shoes. He's got to fill the shoes of Paget. Nice job running the line, squaring up here, coming back and getting in on the tackle. Of course, that's Paget's position that he's filling, and uh, Leon Fuller, the Texas defensive coordinator, and McWilliams both think Paget was having All-American senior year before he tore up the knee last week. Schultz audibleizing. He's got five seconds to get the snap. On third and 11. And Wilson again got to it. It's a pick off. Goodbye, Grady Kittness. Touchdown.
touchdown return, 25 to nothing. Chad Lucas's hold and Craig Dickey's kick. Well, Schultz just makes a poor decision on this play. He throws into traffic. There's a lot of orange shirts out there, and he's under pressure from the defensive end, and he just tries to force the ball in there. This is an inexperienced player's mistake. Again, you look at the coverage. You've got three or four shirts. Look how long the ball. We talked earlier about how the delivery of the football has to be a rocket when you throw that turn pattern, and he's floating the football in there. Angel Alvarez is the intended receiver here, and again, you can credit Lance Wilson for making Schultz delay that delivery. He had to step around Wilson. He didn't have time to do that, and Kavnis makes him pay, and it's 26-0. We return after this from Southwest Airlines. Well, Darren Schultz just uh, delivers a Brady Kavnis interception touchdown to make it 26 to nothing. And Dave, this is already the third highest scoring game for Texas this year. It's going to get a lot worse if they don't come up with some offense. Texas is going to just blow them out of the pot here. Toby Mori, the all-time career kick return leader at TCU. Out to the 24-yard line. This return goes 16 yards. And Schultz yet to join the huddle for TCU. We, we saw Dennis Larson, the, the backup quarterback, Walk on who had, until this week had never even taken a serious snap from the first team preparing to go in, but it will again be Schultz. But at this rate, do you expect them to try Larson just well, to see, you know, it could maybe, be any worse? Maybe to give him just a little lift and have something go right. But I'll tell you what's going to compound Schultz's problem. He has no running game. He's not able to run the football with any consistency, and now it's starting to rain. Ah! are back out. As Schultz will keep and get high collared by Norman Watkins, the freshman linebacker, at the 27. So Texas already starting to mix in some of the defensive depth. And you better have come prepared today to Memorial Stadium. 60% chance of rain just became 100%. They will be extremely fortunate to approach those numbers today. See that total yards, 40 yards so far in this game. One first down. Schultz got away from Todd Hunt to the 28, and uh, Drenette ripped it free after the whistle. Will Robinson made the initial contact, and it will be third and still about six needed. Well, what so compounds the problem? that TCU is going to have is now this defensive line of Texas, which normally gets great pressure. They're saying, hey, go ahead and run the ball. We got a 26-point lead. We know you're going to have to throw the football. So we're just going to take off. This is fun time for this defensive unit. They again go to the five wideouts. Nobody back to help block on Schultz. And the quick hitter goes to Alvarez for not much. Not close to the first down at the 31. It's already been a long afternoon for him. Well, one of the most unbelievable statistics that I see for Texas is that third down completion percentage. They only allow 22% conversions on third down. That is remarkable. If you hold a team to 30, 35%, you should win a lot of football games. Garza at his 25. Clock rolls inside the four-minute mark. Big block by Waddy. Garza with a little room to the right side, and Roosevelt Collins helps out on special teams. How many All-American candidates uh, as seniors do that? Return to the 38 of a 41-yard kick. And we're into the third quarter in Tallahassee. Clemson probably headed to the Citrus Bowl. It's interesting to have all these ball matchups in the year where all that was supposed to finally stop. $250,000 fine if you make the early agreement. And uh, has anything changed? <laughs> well, they're not. They're Nothing. not. They haven't agreed to it. They're just kind of uh, verbal committed. Sure. This is Roderick Walker. They haven't agreed. They're just seriously considering. Yeah. When you, see, when you see the teams making the plane reservations and hotel reservations a week early. 
Texas could still finish seven and four and go nowhere. But last week's loss eliminating eliminating them from any serious Cotton Bowl hopes. Also pretty well taking them out of any bowl besides the Cotton as well. Walker, Walker to the 49. Coming up at halftime, test your knowledge at the Southwest Conference with our Southwest Airlines trivia tester. We'll visit with Texas basketball coach Tom Penders. The run in Horings get underway tonight against Athletes in Action here in Austin. And we'll also meet John Mayer, columnist for the Austin American Statesman and co-author of the book Bleeding Orange. We meet this week's classroom champions and, of course, check all the first half highlights coming up at halftime. Over the 1991 Walker's run good enough for measurement at the 49. And by the nose of the ball, first down. The only higher scoring games for Texas this year were against Rice and SMU. They beat Rice 28-7. They beat SMU 34-0. This is a stat day now. You try and make the numbers oh, yeah. look as good as you can. Well, and I can look out at the defensive unit for TCU, and they're just a little bit down. You can see each one of them's got the hands on their hips. They're kind of standing around saying, boy, we got to get something going here on offense, or we're going to be out here a long time today. Clock rolls at three minutes. Childers, Roderick Walker in the eye. Jardier play action. And we'll look at the play how the backup tight end rumbles near the 20 with his first career catch. Junior from Austin Wesley goes for 30 yards. Well, when you have this much time to pick out a wide receiver on a tight end, you're most likely going to complete it. You see Gardair starts over here now. He's looking to his left. There's nobody there. He gets a little bit of pressure, steps up. But look, he's just running around there. Now he picks up Hal. Good catch up top. Good high reach. And he goes down the sideline. They were prepared to use Thrift every down. No need with a 26-0 lead. Adrian Walker and Roderick Walker in. And it is Roderick jitterbugging to the 11th. He'll be close for another first down. Evans made the tackle. You know, I was looking at Gardere's shoes during the game. It looks like he had white shoes that he tried to paint black. Texas he didn't, didn't, <laughs> didn't try very hard. Well, it looks like the maybe the, the moisture on the field is starting to wear off the black. Well, they look a little bit splotchy. He has surpassed Brett Stafford as the all-time passing leader in Texas. And he's got a senior year to go, taking a lot of abuse. But uh, has I guess his best quality has been resiliency. Whatever happens, he's back the next week. Well, quarterbacks do take a lot of abuse and a lot of the pressure, but they also get a lot of the credit when they win. Last year, he basked in a lot of glory. This year, he's under a lot of pressure. But really, I think their problem has been consistency at the wide re at the wideouts, and of course, all the different little nagging injuries uh, at running back. And haven't it hasn't taken a running back out and said, "Hey, you're out for the rest of the year." But it's just been week after week, the inconsistency back there, the timing has been off. They just had a tough time on offense. This is uh, inches shy. It'll be second and less than a foot on the left. All oh, that's true, but he also, and, and Lynn Amity, very candid about this, he also has just not ha had a good year throwing the ball. Well, he has not. You're right. And it looks as if that's one of the questions that I, like I was saying, I was asking him yesterday is that, what do you do to warm up? Because it seems like once he gets into the rhythm of the game, he, he completes passes, he does a fine job, but he just seems like it takes him at least a half of a quarter to get into that rhythm. Quick catch, Adrian Walker, tight ropes to the six, where it will be first and goal. Well, you can do so many different things. Walker coming out here, a little fake out there, come back out, roll outside, you've got the run pass option. Walker kind of slips out to the flat. When you've got a lead like this, you can take a lot of chances on offense, and that's what Texas is doing. Adrian Walker, leading running back receiver for Texas, his 10th catch of the year. 
And it is name your number for Texas so far. 2-11 in the half. First and goal pitch, Roger Walker. Wrapped up by a hard-charging Roosevelt Collins. You can talk to NFL scouts who say he is the top senior defensive end prospect in the nation. And next year, Tunji Bolden has a chance to be uh, just about that highly rated. Well, they really have played great football for a unit that's been on the field a lot. Collins is probably as strong as asset as his run along the line. Bolden is a little bit stronger up front on the on the run play, but Collins has got that great lateral speed to run the line. Second and goal under pressure dropped at the 25-yard line. Greg Evans on the safety blitz with help from Collins. Sometimes when you get a lead like this, you get a little bit complacent, and I think that's what happened to Peter Gardere that time. This is a play when you see that safety start to cheat up there, and he's coming down your throat. you got to throw it right now. Just get rid of the football. Throw it out there. He took a sack last week in that Houston game that was unbelievable. I think it was about a 22, 23-yard loss. Evans back to two more years. Just a sophomore from Aldean. So third and goal from the 24 now. And they blitz Evans again. And Gardere sacked again by Evans. This loss back to the 35. And this is exactly what cost them that football game last week. Thomas Lewis, who already was a banged up defensive tackle for KCE. That's almost a redundant to say that. They all are, and he's down at the 34-yard line and getting attention. Well, have you ever seen a more physical game than that Texas uh, A&M TCU game? That was one, probably one of the most physical football games I've ever seen. Lewis in the middle there. Looks as if he just kind of got fallen, fell on. But a good blitz again. There's Evans in there. Good safety blitz. That's the only way they're getting any pressure on Gardere. But again, the quarterback's got to see that. You can't have a safety run from 10 to 12 yards back and not see him. He has to sneak forward. The quarterback's got to pick that up, and bam, he's got to get rid of the football. Well, they went from first and goal inside the 10 to fourth and goal from the 34, and uh, barring a fake, they're going to get no points out of this. McClanahan will try and pin the Frogs inside their five with a straight-up, nose-up spiral. Wilbur Dine back there. And it will roll out of bounds. He did his job. Out of bounds at the three. He did his job, but how could you not get points? The flag is down near the line of scrimmage. That flag may just, that flag may take a great punt inside the 10-yard line. It may erase it. So fourth and goal from the 39. Is there a record for most yards needed on goal to go? Well, I'll bet it's a law. I'll bet it's over 40 or 50 yards. This coming with only 13 seconds to go in the first half. Illegal motion. Offense. Repeat fourth down. I think they ought to go for it. <laughs> Wouldn't that be a play? Well, they, they could always snap it short. Target punting again from McClanahan. Pretty good job again, not quite as good. And a TCU hop to the 18. Doesn't have the gaudy numbers of a Mark Bounds, but uh, pretty accurate. Good job all year pinning teams inside their 20. Well, we wondered if we'd see him in the first half. Here he is, Dennis Larson. Bet you didn't expect, you TCU fans, uh, didn't expect to see him probably ever. But he is the fifth quarterback to see action this year. 6'2", 204, walk-on sophomore from San Diego, California. And he hands it to Curtis Modkins on the final play of the first half. And this half comes to a merciful end for TCU. Oh, it's been a disastrous half. They came in here with the idea that they could win this football game, have a chance at a bowl game, and you can see the results 26 to nothing. 
They're going to be hard-pressed to score and get back in this football game in the second half. And we still have 30 minutes all handling. But uh, the options for Jim Wacker at halftime had to be just devastating to him. He is such an up pumped guy. You see him walking around tapping his players, but he's got nowhere to turn. He looks back there, he says, man, I'm on my fifth quarterback. There's nobody behind him. And that's just really got to be frustrating. You know, on, uh, in Texas, for example, the same situation has been true for Lynn Amity and the offense of Texas. The options, as David McWilliams looks on, for his offense, they just haven't been there. You, if your quarterback's not playing well, sure, you can use your second team quarterback. But if your wideouts get hurt, they're dropping the football, there's not a whole lot of things that you can do. Texas back with the win in the third quarter. Barnhill ready to kick. Morey and Hickman are deep. Morey on the left of your screen. Hickman to the right. And a pop-up this time down to the 16 where Hickman finally picks it up. Without any room. And again, TCU starting at their own 20. First half drive chart for TCU. This will be a real quick study. Their longest drives went five plays before punting. Look, they haven't even gotten across midfield in the first half. They've never made it to midfield. We saw for the final play of the first half, Dennis Larson, and he starts the second half. He was in an unspecified California Junior College last year. He has not filled out his questionnaire. The TCU Sports Information people don't know where he went to junior college. But he fires one up for Mike Nowak, and a pretty on-target delivery is broken up near midfield, and the flag is down. Nowak, who has gone most of the way at tight end with Blackwell bothered by the rib injury. Powell had the coverage as Dale decides the penalty. Well, I'll tell you this about him, and you see the referee, the official smiling. I like it. Come out, throw the ball. Hey, we got nothing to lose. He's going to get a first down out of this. They call Powell for pass interference. When he finally fills out his uh, his information questionnaire. Pass interference, defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. Then you and we both will know a little more than we knew about Dennis Larson. Jim Wacker said yesterday he will not take the red shirt off freshman Scott McLeod. He will not play Matt Vogler, who was 60% but with a badly injured hip. Much better off resting today. Derek Cullors takes the handoff to the 40. And he gave Darren Schultz almost the entire first half. And as you saw, he never got more than a five-play drive going. The Southwest Airlines team must first half grades. Well, no, they're certainly not. They didn't leap to an early lead, which is what they need to do. The only thing they did positive was keep Schultz off the stretcher, but Schultz was totally ineffective. And BC Power has just not been there. The, uh, the Collins and uh, Bolden duo just has not been effective. Anthony Curl at the 42 with the second Texas interception of the day intended for Blackwell. There's your baptism, Mr. Larson. Well, what a defense to go against. This defense reacted so well to the football. They're standing back there reading the quarterback, and they make great adjustments. This ball was just overthrown, and the defensive player is just in the right position at the right time. Second interception of the year by Curl. He was uh, somewhat in question today. Wrenched his back last week at the Astrodome. But he has still played and started every game of his career. Gardair. The underneath pattern to the tight end thrift, pushed off by Reed at the 40. And let's check the Texas first half drive chart. As usual, it took him a while. Well, it did. That 180-yard drive just before the half has to really... See, they put two good drives there, one of about 55 yards and the other one 80 yards. So that's an awfully good positive note for that offense. And we wouldn't expect to see Gardere all that often here in the second half with Saxton and Lucas waiting in the wings. Option pitch had not. Evans came up in a hurry from safety. Anderson held out at the 37. First half team must for Texas. Well, they really didn't find the end zone. They've gone now 12 games without scoring a touchdown in that first quarter. We get, they give the defense a break. Well, they, the offense did put together two good drives. 
And they got the Schultz. He's sitting over on the sideline, so that's what they have done in this first half. Third and five at the Frog 37. And it is flipped again for the first down. Catch 23-yard line in front of Hickman. Riff's previous best day, he caught six passes against SMU. What a difference in size, and I think Hickman is a little bit in awe of Thrift. He gives him too much room off the ball. Hickman's only 5'8", Thrift at 6'5", and he just gave him too much of a cushion. You got to play a man. If you're going to play man-to-man -man on that defense, you got to play up in his face. Now a nine-point game in Florida State, as you saw. They were wondering about their kicker coming into that. Roderick Walker. Head at the 25-yard line by Scott Hines, the strong side linebacker. And Roderick in the first half, 12 carries, 41 yards, and a long run of 17. His best game, 51 yards at SMU. Should better that easily here in the third quarter, although he lost one here, second and 11. Walker, right side, the hole closed quickly. Tony ran with a great read coming up from strong safety. Well, that's exactly what a strong safety has to do. He has to play run support, and Rand played that very well. Colorado or Nebraska, or possibly Oklahoma, if Florida State hangs on and defeats Miami, is the projected visitor in the Cotton Bowl. But look what's happening to Colorado. Big 8 runner-up is the expected uh, opponent for, in all probability, Texas A&M. That's barring a Miami comeback, and uh, they scored on their first drive of the day and they have not put up a point since. Gardner away from Suckle, got away from Collins, but not Evans. He got collared at the 24-yard line. Boy, you talk about collared. Man, I mean, this picked Gardere's feet right up off the ground. I thought for a minute it was face mask, but it wasn't. He just tackles him up high and watch Gardere's feet come up. Boom, he's just going to sling him around. We asked David McWilliams yesterday, what do you think Fred Dickey's range is? He said maybe 42 yards. He'll try a 42-yarder. And if he has enough, not quite right. Had enough, but barely. And he's kicked the third today. Time out, 11.07 in the third period. Reception, TCU from the 24-yard line after the missed Craig Dickey field goal. Larson remains the quarterback, Curtis Modkins, with a flag down. It is across the 30 to the 33-yard line, where Lance Gunn and Chris Rapp combine on the tackle. Number 16, Lance Gunn on the stop. Ever see that flag? If you're a coach standing on the sideline, you say, oh, boy, that's offense. That's a flag on the play. And they will wipe off the game by Modkins on the holding call. Pleased to welcome those of you joining us on Prime Network and its nationwide family of regional sports cable networks. That's a bullshit call. <laughs> I don't think they like the call. Holding, holding, offense, offense half the distance, half the distance repeat, first repeat first down. The holding will be against the So uh, from the nine. It will be first down. And they need the 35. And they send Shipley and Houston both wide left. Jackson, the fullback, in front of Derek Cullors. Cullors off the spin to get away from Randy to the 13, and another flag is there. Oh, it's like Memorial Day here if you're Jim Wacker over there because they have seen flags on. Just about every play that they've had productive yardage on, they've had a flag. And that flag was thrown so far out there. That may be a defensive penalty, and if it's holding, and it, that's the signal. Hey, that could be that could be the flag, the makeup flag. For the last one, you throw one out there and make it up. Well, the sun's almost out of here. That's that's the best news. No longer raining.
10-33 in the third quarter. You already know the call. Defensive holding against Texas. Holding. Defense on an eligible receiver. Automatic first down. That holding call was so far away from that play, it's unbelievable. And I think that's what David McWilliams is saying to him. Listen, that was all the way on the far sideline on the wideout that wasn't even going to run a pattern. So they go to the 19. Well, this is a position that uh, Texas has been in only a couple times this year. Other than the Rice and SMU game, every game in 1991 for the Horns has gone down to the last possession. And you can look at it two ways. They're just a few plays away from being 8-0 or a few plays away from maybe being 2-6. and six. Hopkins turns it inside. That's probably the best run he's had today to pick up maybe three. Here's what TCU could have put on the field today. Here's what they've got. All right. Larson, the fifth quarterback they've used this year. Lewis, the slot back, Nowak, and Harper, all starters because of injuries to Leon Clay, Richard Woodley, Kelly Blackwell, and Kyle McPherson. The sporting news, the same uh, people who thought Texas had the best defensive front four in football said TCU had the best receivers in football. Healthy, they're probably right. I think they were absolutely right. Larson delivers and almost picked off first by Rapp and then by Garza. And Dronette made Larson throw before he wanted to. Well, we haven't talked much about Shane Drenette today, but what a football player he is at that defensive end. He's 81 at the bottom of the screen. It's a twist up the middle where the tackle, Patton, takes the guard and, and the tackle out, and he just loops up underneath. And I think he wanted a flag as well. It'll be third and eight. That ball intended for David Lewis, who has uh, yet to grab one so far. Mikens is the lone setback. This is intended for Angel Alvarez. And there were four orange jerseys in the neighborhood. And with 9.41 of the third, TCU will kick again. What they're saying to Larson on the sideline is that you have got to look up your wide receivers. You just can't zero in there. Of course, with the inexperience that he has, that's the least of his problems today. Garza at his 41-yard line. Beacon will kick into the win. All his kicks very low. That one down by Evans. Texas again with good field position at their 48. This kick goes 31. We have 9.33 in the third. Still 26 to nothing. Texas will return after this from Southwest Airlines. They've had an injury. It's just crippled their, their offense. And if, and if you're a young quarterback like Dennis Larson, you're saying to yourself, wow, this was my big chance. I'm going to get a chance to play here in this football game. But things have just not gone well for him. Horns from the 48. Gardere still the quarterback. And Roderick Walker into TCU territory with about an eight-yarder to the 44. Still 16 to 7 in Tallahassee in the fourth quarter. Ohio State nudging in front of Indiana at Columbus and East Carolina likewise after trailing most of the day against Virginia Tech. In Waco, Tech within three after trailing by 10 at Oklahoma on top of Oklahoma State in the first. Walker, first down to the 40. How long would you go with Gardere and uh, all these frontliners for Texas if you're McWilliams? Well, if I'm David McWilliams, I'm going to go with Peter Gardere through the third quarter because I want him to realize he's having a good day leading his offense. They're being a little bit productive. I don't care who he's running against. They're still getting some offensive continuity together, putting together some drives. So I want him to come off the field on a good note. Obviously, I don't want him to get hurt. But right now, in this situation, he can pretty much dictate what he wants to do. Run the ball with success. They pass only on short downs. He doesn't have to take any chances. Walker again. They are mixing in backups on the line. In fact, the entire second team offensive line in. 
And a new fullback, Gerald Coulter, number 37, who walked on and has never carried the ball in his career in Texas. Sophomore from Sherman. Is uh, also in that much time to go third quarter. Duke and Neal both wide right. And on the option, boy, did they seal off the right side for guard there. Collins and Bolden got him back at the 42. Perfectly defended. Yes, it was. Collins is he's a good football player, solid in every aspect of the game. Good, good pass rusher, strong field blocker, takes on the blocks well and plays his keys very well. Now, this is keys. He can't lose outside containment. He's got to turn it back in. He does his job, plus gets in on the tackle. That's a plus for him on that grade. And an artist and a poet. He will get his commercial art degree in December. Third and 12. Collins from stand-up defensive end that time, and again coming down on Gardeer with Bolden at the 48. You talked about him being a stand-up. He is. Sometimes he drops back in pass protection. This time he was standing up. He ran up to the line to play defensive end, started to rush, got inside, came back outside, kept good containment, and allowed Bolden to come all the way across the field. Now, see, you see him 48 down there. Now watch, Bolden's going to come all the way across the field to make that tackle. That's great coordination between your defensive linemen. Flanahan's kick down to Hickman at the 10. Norman Watkins has been a standout on special teams all day. He recovered the fumble punt in the first quarter. This kick goes 38 yards and return of seven. You know, these Texas fans have stuck it out through the bad weather. They want to see a point for it. They haven't seen uh, anything so far in the third quarter. Not that the game isn't now, but they want to see it. They, they've not had a chance to enjoy route time this year. No, they haven't. But I'll tell you one thing. If there ever was going to be a route, this would be it for Texas because TCU has virtually started every drive inside their 20-yard line. They've never been across midfield. They've given Texas so many opportunities. Larson with the fake to Mikens. And then behind Mike Nowak, who was open at the 25. And Brunette's backup, Lance Wilson, who got uh, his first real extensive action this year after Brunette left uh, the Arkansas game. Just about every time he's in, he pressures. Yes, he does. He's he's had a great teacher in Drenette watching him for the last year, getting off the ball, coming in there, getting that great pressure. Wilson at left end with 69. Back up right end, Jeff Higgins also in. And that one caught by Colors, who got away from Rapp. And that will be close for a first down of the 26. Now that's the type of pattern I would run if I'm Jim Wacker. Those quick crossing patterns that you're going to get somebody running free because if you're playing man-to-man -man defense, you've got him out of the backfield. He's just running straight across the field. You can see he's got some distance between he and the defender. That's the kind of pass that you can complete in this situation. Back up left corner, Joey Ellis, the true freshman from Tyler, making the tackle, number 27. Have you ever seen Jim Wacker so subdued? I I mean, I've seen him down by 25 and 30 points, yelling and just encouraging his players, but he has virtually stood there the entire game and has shown very little emotion. Well, this is uh, not a situation emotion is going to overcome. Just short, it will be third and about a foot. But uh, the, the year that he thought with health they could have, they won't have. It's still their first winning season since 84, and uh, that is what he will take into the recruiting wars this year. At the conclusion of today's game, Dave and I announced the Southwest Airlines player of the game. And that's no small accomplishment at TCU. It certainly is not. This is just a power football situation today. What they need to do right now is get a first down, get something positive, try to get some some, some things going in this football game to keep it uh, respectable, I guess is the best word to use. 
just run a straight dive, hand it off to that back, and let him just blow up in there. That's Colors. Colors has got good talent. They're very, very high on him. Larson for the keeper, maybe. All depends on the mark. Hey, that, this is going to be another close one. He didn't penetrate the line very well. The surge, the surge here. Watch those defensive linemen up front just crush. If he made it. He's not going to make it by much. Graf up there meeting him headlong. And they once again are going to have to measure. Mark Berry has been uh, taken by a golf cart to the Texas locker room and will wait to hear what his injury is. Ooh. Didn't take long. Twisted ankle. He probably will not be back. And by the nose of the ball, first down. We didn't lie to you, by the way, about Tom Pendrick. We fully expected him to be dropping by at half time, and we're still searching for the all points bulletin. They produce a chat uh, hopefully sometime in the fourth quarter with the head coach of Texas basketball. Larson with time for Alvarez and broken up by Ellis. They're real high on Joey Ellis. 4-4 speed. And some people rated him as the top incoming defensive back out of Texas high schools last year. He's getting action because of that very ankle injury. And with Barry playing out his senior year, this will be the guy who inherits that job next year. Parts. He's wide left. Alvarez and Jackson also left side. As Larson might have wanted to give that to Colors and uh, barely hanging on is the quarterback Larson. Here's how the ball has been distributed to the White House today for TC. For the season, here's how it looks. Tight ends get most of the action. Slot backs are next. White outs are next. And then the running backs. You can certainly, when you have a, a tight end like Kelly Blackwell, no wonder you throw the tight ends the most. Really a tough injury for him, too, because he needs 12 catches to become the all-time NCAA tight end receiving leader. Gordon Hudson of BYU holds that record. Stretching grab, and boy, did that smart. Powell got him with the full head of speed, and Blackwell takes it and pops up. Well, he's, he is quite a competitor. He had to go high for this football, and the one thing you don't want to do when you've got sore ribs is to go high. Just a little turn out. Watch how high he has to go for the football. And that has got to hurt when you come back down. So he needs 11 catches for the record. He also needs three more for one more mark. There was a flag down. Rubbing the passer. Defense. 15 yard head on and first down. Blackwell came in needing four catches to tie Emmanuel Tolbert of SMU, the number four in uh, conference history. He's now within three, and then you got Eric Henley and Rice and the two former Houston Cougars, Manny Hazard and Jason Phillips, at the top of that list. A lot of guys could just phone it in from here on in in a game that's out of reach, and as much pain as he's feeling, he's back out there. Larson for the back of the Texas bench. He had an open man, and it was uh, Michael Jackson. If he was 12 feet tall, he would have brought that one in. <laughs> yeah. Larson just does not throw the ball with authority. He has got to drill that football in there. This is a time when, you, when you're when you out there and you're, you're a fifth-team quarterback. You got no pressure on you. Nobody expected you to play. So just throw that ball as hard as you can. Drill it in there. Second and ten. The Frogs have six first downs today. Three came by Texas penalty. And this one, another pop-up. Shipley double covered by Garza and Ellis. It will be third and ten. I thought on this drive we were going to get to see TCU cross midfield. I don't know about it now. 
think for Larson it's hard enough just to see. They signal it from the sideline. With Larson, they probably can't even signal and see the uh, Motkins run in and tell him what the play is. He can't even read the signals. He hasn't had enough experience to do that. So they have to relay him in with a runner. This is the longest TCU drive of the day. It's on nine plays so far, and Motkins with the swing pass will keep it going. At the Texas 39, their fourth non-penalty first down of the day. Garza on the tackle. And that was another one of those crossing patterns. That's where if he's had any success, he's had it on this type of a play. Just a crossing pattern. A lot of people coming up in the space, you just throw underneath the coverage. I don't know why they haven't gone through that more often. Indiana. Larson's only snaps in practice before this week came as the scout team quarterback. Only this week has he even taken any snaps at all with the first team. Under pressure intended for David Lewis, the slot back, well covered by Garza. And James Patton, we haven't called his name all that often today, but he uh, was bearing down on Larson that time. Well, Dave, let me tell you a little bit about a scout team. What the scout team does is it runs the plays of the opponent. You don't run your own offense. So when you come out here and you've run the plays of your opponents, you say, hey, Texas runs this, but I've got to run the TCU offense today. Colors on second down. Nice cutback. And inside the 35. Bring up third and five. They didn't expect much at all as a freshman out of colors. Well, they've got two touchdown games against uh, New Mexico, Tech, Arkansas, and Rice this year. But did you see the way those coaches bubbled up when we mentioned his name? I mean, they light up. They say, wow, he is going to be something in his future. His career is going to really have some statistics by the time he gets finished at TCU. Again, the crossing pattern, and he had an open man, Alvarez, through his hands. Incompletion to bring up fourth and five. That was, however, the longest extended drive by TCU all day. And uh, they, of course, will go for it on fourth and five, down 26 to nothing. Well, I like this play selection. I like that pass. That was a better pass. He drilled the ball in there. I'd come back and run the same play. That crossing pattern underneath. See if they can catch Texas in that two-deep zone and throw underneath it. Modkins with the catch for the first down. I tackle by Anthony Curl, and they have finally found something to go to consistently. Well, this is the exact same pattern. They run that underneath. See the little crossing pattern? What you try to do is you try to run the defense a little bit deep, just enough to pick up the first down, then cut in and be the big target for the quarterback. All the passes that he has completed have been that type of a pass. So first down, Texas 28, 253 in the third quarter. TCU trying to get on the board. Big pressure. Colors, did he get it? Inbounds, he did at the 11 yard line. That looked like it was going to be another floater that would sail over Colors' head. He brought the beat down just ahead of Kirk. That was great execution by Colors on the sideline there. Again, this quarterback under a lot of pressure, but he just lets it fly. And watch Colors just kind of skip his feet, just quickly get him down. Has to get that one foot down and bounds, and he does. Good concentration by Colors. Catch the ball, control it, get those feet down and bounds. Excellent play. Fans wanting the shutout preserved get a little noisier as that one is not an interception at bounds by Ellis. He was bobbling it as he went over the side. Had Ellis caught this ball clean, he may have caught it in bounds, but he bobbled it just a second. And it looked like his left foot came down on the sideline. Again, the ball a little bit wobbly and high, underthrown. You don't want to underthrow this ball. And watch right there. Now, if he catches it right there, he's in bounds. 
But again, he kind of bobbles it, and you see his foot right on the line. The official in perfect position to make the call. Well, they went for Shipley at 6-5 against Ellis at 5-9. They might try that again. Larson calling the audible. Snap clock at 4. As the rush comes and gets him at the 20. Boone Powell on the blitz from strong side linebacker. And everybody on the TCU sideline was saying, throw the ball, you don't see what's behind you. Throw the football. This is the one where a quarterback, an experienced quarterback, a lot of times has a feel for that pressure behind. This young man does not, and he just gets crushed on the play. Baylor adds another seven, back up by 10, over Tech in Waco. Third and 20. They're coming again. He got it off that time. And it was between Baraka Harper and Curtis Monkins, and it'll be fourth down. They're going to send in the field goal unit and try just to get on the board with 151 in the third. Well, that wasn't a bad drive for Larson. Really, it's the best drive that TCU has had all day. He threw some good passes, especially those crossing patterns. He was able to complete those. This is Jeff Wilkinson, junior from Katie Maid Creek High School. Is 10 for 19 this year. That's the third most field goals in the conference. This will be a 38-yarder. No act with the hole. The kick is no good. Wilkinson between 20 and 39 yards is 7 of 17. Beyond the 40, he's 3 for 3. Next time they'll go offside, back him up, he'll be perfect. 147 in the third, Texas shutout. Still in progress. Miami just goes ahead on a short touchdown run, 17-16. They trailed 16-7. And Jimmy Saxton is the new Texas quarterback. First and 10 from the 21. He's more of a runner than a passer, and he coughs it up under pressure from Collins. And it looks like Texas hangs on, but will wait. And TCU says, nope, that's not the case. Boy, Dale says it is second down. Anytime you get backside pressure, this is where a quarterback is most vulnerable to drop the ball. That's what Collins does. He just kind of swaps around there and just kind of swats at the football and knocks it out of the hands of Saxton. And the center, Turk McDonald, is uh, the man on the recovery for Texas. That's the fourth fumble Collins has caused this year. And as we said, Saxton, much more the runner than thrower at quarterback. 6'3", 190, sophomore from Austin Westlake. It was spark in the Auburn game, and that ignited the quarterback controversy for a while. Roderick Walker searches in vain for room off the left side. Collins again on the hit, rolling up the tackling numbers here in the second half. And it'll be third down. We also figure we'll see Chad Lucas at some point. That is is so often the case in Austin, the most popular man in town is the backup quarterback. Mississippi coming back a little on Tennessee. Iowa struggling with Northwestern. Evans on the safety blitz. Caught by Duke. And a first down to the 36. Well, for a non-thrower, he couldn't have put this one any more on target. He certainly did. It was a little bit outside of Duke, away from his body, but he reached out nicely, caught the ball, and picked up good yardage for the first down. 18 yards, Duke's first catch of the day. Well, when you have a 26-point lead, let me tell you, for a quarterback, that's a dream. But you can't do anything wrong. If you force the ball and you uh, throw an interception, you come to the sideline and say, well, gee, I'm sorry about that, coach. But when you're in a 10-10 to -10 tie and you're in the fourth quarter and you throw that interception, a lot different pressure. That is the end of the third quarter. And with 15 more minutes to go, still 26-0 Texas. Back 
at Austin, Dave Barnett, Dave Rowe as we open the fourth quarter. First and ten, Texas. Jimmy Saxton, the quarterback at the 36-yard line, and this is what he does best. The option pitch, Roderick Walker got away from Evans. A late flag as he comes close to the first down marker. On the play. Walker getting a workout today. We have uh, really not seen had not to speak of here in the second half. Third quarter numbers. Out of 102 total yards, the vast majority came on that last TCU drive. And Texas uh, at the half at 217 total yards, only 38 in that third quarter. This mark off against Texas. At least Collins gets to make a positive decision. Let's take him back. As soon as we get the call from Lloyd Dale, we'll give you a Houston Rice update. Holding by the offense. Repeat first down. We at Rice Stadium, 7 0 out. Just inside the 37 yard line. All over at Clemson. And they will await their Citrus Bowl bid. Jim Wacker came in just sure that if he could beat David McWilliams for the first time, he would be going somewhere. You'd think the, the biggest possibility would be the Poland Weed Eater Independence Bowl, but every listing, every uh, early rumor said Arkansas and not TCU. Saxton on the long roll, almost picked off by Hickman, intended for Duke at midfield. Well, the the thing that's so frustrating for Jim Wacker is to come in with that expectation, but to realize that in reality, he didn't have much of a chance. You just cannot go four or five quarterbacks deep and expect to be competitive. But he was banking on if they beat Texas, they win seven. If Arkansas loses, and especially if they lose big at A&M, which is a big possibility tonight, then the Independence Bowl people might uh, shift their thinking. That was the idea. <laughs> and it was a good idea. And the, and the kids were out here practicing yesterday, and they were bouncing around. They had a they had a real good Friday afternoon practice. Oh, On the action pitch, Walker to the 43. Rand and Hickman on the tackle. Bowl bids officially, of course, go out tomorrow. Most teams already know where they'll be playing. And Saturday night, December 28th, Raycom will bring you Blockbuster Bowl 2 from Joe Robbie Stadium in sunny South Florida. The first Blockbuster Bowl, a smash hit. Blockbuster Bowl 2 promises to be a great sequel, so we hope you can be sure and join us Saturday night, December 28th. Luke replaced by McElroy along with Neal wide left on third and three. 13.48 to go in the game. This comes, picked up well, knocked away from Neal. What a hit on that side, delivered by Steve Reed, the right corner. Number 25. Member of the Junior College Championship team. In fact, the MVP of the championship game for Coffeeville Community College in Kansas last year. Well, right now, let me tell you what Jim Wacker and his staff look for, Dave. They're looking for players that are going to continue to fight even though the score is, is so bad. They're looking for players for next year. Low snap. McClanahan barely got it off. And Hickman fair caught at the 34. Almost a block, and it goes 24 yards. Wacker trying to fire him up. Down 26, 13, 35 to play. You on third down conversion. Frogs first and 10, their own 33 yard line. And Modkins is the lone setback. He takes the draw play handoff. And uh, by their standards today, that's a huge game. Oh, that is. That 10 yards that they had rushing prior to that attempt was on 20 attempts. They were averaging a half a yard per carry. Modkins just picks up about, oh, probably about five or six. Even seven officially, second and three. Worry in for Shipley. He goes top of your screen. Big 
Post to Colors. Larson hits Colors. And a first down. And they are in Texas territory for only the third time today. Out of pickup of 10. All year long, the Texas defense has come into games knowing that the Texas offense was unlikely to put many points on the board. We asked James Patton how much pressure that put on them. We have to go out and we have to take charge a little bit more than we have. And uh, we've been doing our part in the points we've been giving up, but I think we have to do more than, you know, just giving up a certain amount of points. Our job should be to go out there and shut them out. I'm going to guess no one has even asked him about that earring. <laughs> Is you strongest player in Texas history? No. That could have been fair caught by Lance Gunn. He returns to the 39, his fourth interception of the year, ninth of his career. Have you ever seen an easier interception? I thought he was throwing to him. But Larson drops back and throws. You'll see Gunn. Watch this pass. Just straight up in the air. Look, it comes way out here. The receiver is way off to the right. It's the only one out there. Credit the patent pressure. Texas with another takeaway. <laughs> Including that one by Lance Gunn. Saxton's pistol, Robert Walker picks his way through, might be gone. They finally run him down at the 25-yard line. Tony Rand after a gain of 35. Longest run of Roderick Walker's brief career. Well, you hate to be critical of Walker, but let me tell you, if he had just turned it on outside instead of trying to line him up, he was gone. Right here, just turn it on outside. Now, what he tries to do is come back underneath, and the pursuit catches up to him. Try him again, and he dives for a couple. And the leap over the middle linebacker, Smith. rolling at 11.47 and counting. At Tallahassee, Florida State had a chance for a go-ahead field goal inside the last minute. They missed it. And Miami still on top by one. 17-16. That may put Florida State in the conference. Saxton again doing a good job to get the pitch off. It's knocked out of Walker's hands and out of bounds. Greg Evans caused the fumble, it'll be third down. Monday night, December 30th on Raycom, it's the Freedom Bowl from Anaheim, California. The rumor mill says, and it is seldom wrong, that tonight's Brigham Young San Diego State loser will take on Tulsa in that game. And we hope you make plans now to join us December 30th for the Freedom Bowl. That, of course, is the Tulsa team that... At this point, stands between A&M and a chance at a national title. It's at one point, amazing 35-34 comeback win. Intended for McLemore and the flag down very, very late against Steve Reed. I remember a statement by Bobby Bout about his kicking game. It was so bad, he said, it's going to be the death of me. With that missed field goal, that was about a 35-yard attempt, we understand. If that is... It missed by six inches. That's the narrow goalpost. Florida State that far away from maybe their first national title. Do you think that was a good rule? No, I don't. I don't like the narrow goalposts. I think it's taken a lot of the offense out of out of college football. I think people like to see scoring. They like to see field goal attempts to win the football game. And I just don't like it. Interference! Defense! Spot foul! Automatic first down! I want to tell you one thing. I, I did never envisioned that the goalpost being that, just that little bit more narrower would have that much effect on college football. And I think right now, I think the officials that uh, set those rules are saying, maybe we made a little bit of a mistake. Maybe we shouldn't have made them so narrow. After the markoff, first and 10 at the 11. They can make a first down without a touchdown. Walker will lose one. Reed, who just got called for the pass interference, came up for the tackle. And it's ironic that in the NFL, they're worried about scoring being down. In college football, they deliberately try to bring the scoring down. Well, Dave, also you see the angle we've made mention of the field goal kickers. 
Let's check the final now. It is all over, and Miami by six inches on the field goal attempt by Florida State has apparently put themselves in the Orange Bowl and Florida State in the Cotton Bowl, probably against a Stretch out grab for the touchdown. Cosmo Palmieri. First catch for the sophomore from Austin Westlake, who was not supposed to play today. He was hurt. Boy, he's glad he did play. He did a great job of stretching out there for the football. Good concentration. Looked it in. He caught one pass for nine yards all of last year. That's his first pass this year. And it goes for six, and Dickey's kick is wide right. Luckily for Texas, the issue no longer in doubt. Three looks at Cosmo Palmieri's first touchdown pass. Well, the post pattern is wide open, and Palmieri just great concentration as he leaps out. That's a tough catch because the ball's going away from you. You've got to concentrate on it, and you've just got to dive out. Does an excellent job. Again, look at that offensive line giving him very little pressure. Good concentration there is the completion. If you're a TCU cornerback, you can't let him have inside position. And also the first touchdown pass this year by Jimmy Saxton. Seconds still to go. This has seemed like about a week since kickoff for Jim Wacker and the Frogs. Saxton to Paul Mary, making it the second highest scoring game for Texas this year, next to their 34 0 victory over SMU. And that is not Ted Barnhill. We uh, quite honestly don't know who just kicked off for Texas. As Maury's return goes up the side across the 30. An unspecified number 82 for Texas, and it will probably get tough to tell the players, even with the program. From here on in, the Texas scoring drive. After Lance Gunn's interception goes five plays, big plays, the run by Robert Walker setting up the pass to Paul Mary. You know, I was thinking about Paul, Paul Mary. He was a member of the Dave Rowe, Bocce Cook, all-name team last year. Of course, it was a, what a Hotch, to him. Bocce <laughs> Hotch all-name team last year. That was before a correction from the family. Back in, it's Darren Schultz, set quarterback. And Perry Montgomery with the tackle on a scrambling Schultz, who played all but the final snap of the first half for TCU. We saw Dennis Larson right up until this drive for TCU in the second half. Dave, you see that 47 on the back of the helmet there? That is in honor of Fred Washington, Chicago Bear, who was killed in an automobile wreck last year. This year, excuse me. The former defensive lineman for TCU had a promising career until that tragic accident in Chicago. Colors will have the first down to the 44. Well, a lot of folks come back for this TCU offense. Uh, Shipley next year will be a senior. They lose Blackwell. They get uh, McPherson back. Harper, his backup, will be a senior. Modkins will be a senior. David Lewis, Michael Jackson will be seniors, as will Cedric Dickens. Colors, of course, just a true freshman. And they'll have Leon Clay back, and uh, let's knock on wood that we'll finally see an entire healthy season out of uh, Leon Clay next year. Nobody deserves it more. Tim Shade will be only a sophomore as his backup. Hoisted up from Modkins, who made a pretty good adjustment as Norman Watkins ran right on by Modkins, but harmlessly incomplete. Now another plus for TCU next year is that offensive line is just about intact with the loss of John Marsh. They're going to have a pretty good offensive line. That's a that's a big loss, though. Marsh, oh, yes. just about every week, has been their highest-rated offensive line. Five of their last seven games. Schultz again will scramble. You can hear the hit up here delivered at the 47. And that's why they call him the hammer. Well, he's used to that. Remember he running down on kickoff coverage team? 
That is not the hammer down. That uh, one of his blockers as the tackle was delivered by Doug Livingston, a backup linebacker. The injured frog, uh, we cannot pick up the number at the 37-yard line. When's the last time you heard a quarterback called the hammer? Uh, I never heard Stabler called that, or uh, <laughs> or I think of, right away, I think of Roger Staubach. He was never known as the hammer. Fran the hammer Tarkenton? No. no, no. <laughs> We will wait to get the identification of the injured frog and be back after this from Southwest Airlines. Back in is Larson. The injured frog was guard Benny Scott. He limped with help off the field. Third and six. And Larson to the side caught Blackwell with a flag down. Now the flag came well away from the reception by Blackwell. His second of the afternoon if it stands. There's a flag on the play. If it stands, that puts him within two of Emmanuel Tolbert for fourth in conference history. Well, the only two things it could be would be offensive interference where you pushed off or defensive interference where you really held him because there was no pick involved in the play. That's the holding call. It's going to go against Texas, so the Blackwell completion stands. Lloyd Dale uh, will eventually make the call official. Holding on the defense, declined, first down. At the Texas 41, Ohio State coming from behind win over Indiana. Underway at State College and an early score for the Nittany Lions. Black rolls here at 8.45 to play. 32-0 Texas. Larson for Shipley. Pascal Wadi had slipped. And the big target, Stephen Shipley, at the 32-yard line. Terry Montgomery on the tackle. Dave, I'll tell you, this Larson is throwing the ball much better now. I know there's different players out there, and that's the first thing you look at. He's not getting as much pressure up front. The coverage is not as strong, but the trajectory of his football is much better. He's throwing straight line passes, not those floaters. Well, he should have uh, some velocity at 6 2 204, you would think. Showed a little there, gain of eight, second and two. And Modkins inside the 20. Best run of the day for the Frogs. They mark him out of bounds at the 16 after a gain of 17. And remember, they had 10 total rushing yards through the first three quarters. Kelly Blackwell, we've highlighted him today a lot. He's got, he's got a lot of coverage with him. All day long, he's had people right in his face. That time, he turns what looked like coverage into a block and gets a nice block downfield. Spring Motkin. Not really a great admirer of Kelly Blackwell. Like you said, Dave, he could have just thrown it in here anytime during this game. Said, hey, my ribs are hurting. I don't want to be out here. I've got a great career ahead of me. I've got a chance to play professional football. A lot of people are looking at me, but he is a competitor. Larson changing the play. Just got the snap off in time and batted away by Ellis, intended for Toby Moore. That pass intended for number nine, Mike Houston. The play broken up by Joey Ellis, number 27. Let's pause briefly for station identification on the Raycom Network. This is KTXA TV, Channel 21, Fort Worth, Dallas. Memorial Stadium in Austin, about 58,000. Enjoying what they have seen, 32-0 Texas. And this game, basically no contest from uh, the early second period on. And second and ten, too tall for Mikens. He might have taken that one in. He had gotten away from Lance Gunn, and uh, all the other secondary people had their backs turned. I'd come right back with the same play. That continues to be a bit of a surprise from Rice Stadium. Rice hoping for the uh, winning record, which has eluded them ever since 1963. 
ECU home for their first win since 67 over Texas. Two longest streaks in the league of Texas over this squad team and over Rice. Third and ten. To the end zone to Blackwell and a little long. It'll be fourth down. We have beaten Boone Powell. That's another pattern where just the mere act of trying to catch it has, has really got to be painful. Yeah, and the first person I saw run over and help him up was Lance Gunn. He's got a lot of respect for him also. Every football player that's out there, Dave, I can tell you from, from having played this game a long time, people admire courage in other players. When you know a player's hurt and he's out there giving it 100%, you as an opponent have a great amount of respect for him. They will again try to break the shutout. Wilkinson will try a 33-yarder. Nowak, the holder, the kick is good. It's good. But a flag is down. So hold everything. And it is against TCU. Illegal procedure. And you hear the crowd react. They want to shut out. Jim Wacker saying, what do we have to do to score in this football game? This time from 38. Illegal procedure. Offense. Got enough men on the line of scrimmage. That means that one of the linemen that was down was too far off the ball in his set, and they consider him in the backfield. Well, you don't expect that penalty in mid-November. But you can uh, watch Wilkinson try this one from 38 yards. And this time, no good. Wide right. Shut out intact for Texas. Uh, injury plagued SMU offense has caught more than 50 this year. Here's Adrian Walker. Ripping off about a 17-yarder for a first down at the 37-yard line. I think that's the hardest thing about a picking an all-conference when, when I sit down and look at them and we discuss them, there's so many candidates that are so close. It's not like you pick a clear-cut winner. Uh, when you look at those receivers, you've got any one of those receivers could make, make any all-conference team. That's the quality of them. Well, Mary wide left. McLemore wide right. And again, it is Adrian Walker. To the 48. Close to 10 there. Big comeback by the East Carolina Pirates to remain at least number 14 in the country after Virginia Tech led most of the way. Tennessee should stay top 10. Florida State still has to play Florida. Tech keeping that one close in Waco. Boy, hasn't Northwestern been a surprise this year? It really has. Saxton on the roll on first down. You see new territory inside the corner. Brian is loose and picked up by Calvin Jones. Paul Mary with the tackle. And Texas with the turnover, but a flag down. And it will not prevent the turnover. Saxton stretching for an extra yard or two here. Cross it up. And it was Hickman who pried the ball loose for Jones to recover. Frogs at the 24-yard line. That, that appeared to be on a busted play. And uh, Saxton commits the first Texas giveaway of the day. Larson still the quarterback. And attempted stretch out grab by Shipley, but he was out of bounds. At the 35. Well, you know, I've got a little tendency here to be soft. What I would do in this situation, I'd throw Kelly Blackwell as many passes as I could. Hey, 
about Penn State over Notre Dame. Boy, Notre Dame has had a horrible time going up to Happy Valley there in Pennsylvania and, and being competitive. And they have just, that's where they've been beaten most of the times in that, in that series. They could be looking at three losses and still be in a major bowl. Probably will be in a major bowl. Carry to the 28-yard line. Kevin Fry out of Haltham City, his first carry. Highly touted the recruit. He's a sophomore, 5'6", 210 pounds. Back up running back. It will be third and ten. Well, this was supposed to be the year where all the madness ended and all the early agreements ended and the Bulls made more sense. And it looks like it won't make any more sense than it has recently. Well, let's be honest. You know what dictates who goes to what bowl. Record has a lot to do with it, obviously, but it's to do with how many people you can put in that stadium. What a hit by Ellis against Michael Jackson. This true freshman from Tyler prevents a big gainer for Michael Jackson. Boom. And wherever Kyle McPherson is watching this game, he just punched. He was a guy laid out by Quentin Corey out of the Aggies last week, breaking his jaw. I want to tell you, in all my years of football, I've only seen three or four hits like that. That was the devastation for him. When you told me he got up and walked off the field, I could not believe it. Walked to the locker room. Returned by Willie Mac Garza. He is ankle tackled by Collins. Nine-yard return to a 45-yard kick with the win for Trey Beacon. Next week, we'll see the Frogs again in Fort Worth against the Houston Cougars. We hope you can join us. Check your local listings. We'll be at Amon Carter Stadium. Run and shoot against Triple Shoot. <laughs> Our director, Johnny Tyus, can't go anywhere in this conference without being hounded by cheerleaders. Poor guy. Play action and uh, incomplete in front of McLemore. Well, when you team him up with David the Hammer Handler, I mean, you've got an off, uh, just an awesome combination. And what they do is they use that camera and tell all the young ladies, you'll get on if you just say hello to Johnny. We know that trick. <laughs> also, of course, our statistician, Kirk McCarley, spotter Charlie Durker. Helping out here in Austin, 5.38 to play. 32-0 horns, second and 10. And that one intended for uh, Gerald Crawford, and alert Adrian Walker jumps on it. Crawford, the blocking back. Hard to tell who made the mistake there. He obviously did not expect the pitch. And as a blocking back, he wouldn't expect the pitch. No, I don't think that pitch was even intended for him. I think he was going to pitch it back to the running back, who was about three yards deeper, and Crawford just happened to be right in the middle. For a while this afternoon, the tightest collar in America belonged to Haas Brock, executive director of the Cotton Bowl, because had Miami not beaten Florida State, they might have been looking at a Colorado team with three losses and a tie in the Cotton Bowl, but uh, apparently it will be the Seminoles in Dallas against probably the A&M Aggies. Well, Mary's second catch, first down to the 41. Grand on the tackle. A day to show your depth if you're David McWilliams. You know, and if everything breaks the way it's expected to, you could have a 10 and 1 AM and maybe an 11 and 1 Florida State after Texas Miami last year. That'll be an outstanding football game. Saxton on the option keeper, got away from Reggie Anderson. You know, Anderson wanted a big day in front of his uh, hometown folks and about 40 people he had to get tickets for. We really haven't called his name all that often. I was just going to make a comment about A&M playing in that Cotton Bowl, Dave. But, uh, boy, they are a great football team. They are dominant on uh, on defense, outstanding defense. And that uh, offense led by Bucky Richardson, the only game he doesn't play in, they lose. If he plays in that football game, like you said, they're, they're going in undefeated. This is Adrian Walker, first down yardage at the TCU 29.
Well, last week against Tennessee, bad second half. This week against Penn State, with four seconds to go in the first quarter, a bad first half for Notre Dame. But the Bulls uh, would rather have a three-loss Notre Dame than a lot of 9-2, and 10-1 and one teams on New Year's Day. The Alliance will kick in next year. We'll see if that changes. Walker. Mike Moulton came up, backup linebacker. And the clock rolls at 345. The applause you hear is the uh, announcement over the media yes. that Notre Dame is losing. And they weren't real thrilled about the announcement that Miami had beaten Florida State either. No, they certainly were not. But boy, did they respond when they heard Penn State 21, Notre Dame nothing. Walker got one, second and nine. To the short side, and he might get to just back to the line of scrimmage. If that. Junior from Tyler, Chapel Hill, Adrian Walker. Kentucky making it interesting mm. in, uh, in uh, Gainesville, Florida, with time still remaining before Florida can wrap up the host Sugar Bowl bid. We thought they put that one away in the first half. Third and ten. Saxton to no one. Nearest Horn was a good ten yards away. Justin McLemore. Saxon that time was thinking post, and McLemore said, I think I can beat him straight on down the field. Boris Saxton comes from our great Texas heritage, doesn't he? Last time we were here, we, uh, we interviewed at halftime his father, James Saxton, All-American in the early 60s for Texas. And on fourth and ten, his son will go over the middle, and that has got to be interference. No flack. Hickman with a way early contact against the intended Texas receiver, Jimmy Hakes, the tight end. Thank All you. I can figure is they said it was uncatchable. uncatchable. That's exactly what it was. The ball was thrown behind him, and the official was there and said there was no chance that he would have caught that football. So on downs, TCU takes over with 3.03 to play at their 30. And Larson back in as the quarterback throws behind Modkins, incomplete. The comparison today to their season averages, 46 yards on the ground, the average 110, 129 passing. 270 per game, 11th in the country in passing offense before today. Total yards only 175, and they have been shut out. Second and 10. And another grab for the tight end, Nowak, to the 37. Talked about the changing goalpost width this year and of course that caused adjustments for players and coaches alike early in the season and uh, <laughs> there was a real funny story out of Texas Tech and I asked Spike Dykes about this and he said it was true when TCU came in to play Tech he walked across the field and told Jim Wacker he said coach he said uh, Jim he said I'm sorry he said but well, we just found out that we didn't move the goalpost in uh, and he said it's just a mistake and of course Jim Wacker, who loves jokes and loves uh, loves to pull jokes, I mean, he bit on it. Boy, did he bite on it. He turned around and he said, oh, I can see it. I can see it. Yeah, no wonder you've got the number one field goal kicker. He said, oh, man, what? Oh, oh, that's unbelievable. Well, then Spike walks across the field, and about five minutes later, up comes this little reporter and asks him, says, Coach, how am I going to handle this? Coach Wacker just broke the news that uh, your goalposts aren't, <laughs> aren't at the right width. 
And of course, uh, in talking with Jim, he's a he's just a wonderful person to talk to. He's always up. He's always positive. He turned around and said, "Boy, I've bit on some things." He said, "But I took the whole line sinker, the end of the pole." He said, "I've never bitten on one like that." He said, "Geez, OP, he got me down." <laughs> Too tall for Shipley. Second and ten. But I can just picture Jim Wacker looking up at those goalposts and saying, Oh, yeah! I see it! I see it! The reporter comes up to Dykes. He says, Hey, go measure him. Go measure him. And then you got a ruler. You got a ruler. Go measure him. Well, yeah, that's the same Jim Wacker who, uh, at the Southwest Conference luncheon prior to this season, introduced Leon Clay, saying Leon Clay was all everything in high school. He even, even was the student of the month at his school, and the month was August. <laughs> this one deep for Shipley. And out of bounds, third and ten. David Shipley and the we talked about it before this year. Have you ever seen a more unlucky program in terms of injuries than TCU? Year in, year out. Well, every year they get people hurt, and they are such critical people. Again, I wonder what they would really be. I don't know if they're if they're ten and one, nine and two, but boy, with Leon Clay back there, such a difference at quarterback. He runs the entire offense. He's very familiar with it. He makes the adjustments on the line. And we're talking about uh, a player, these two quarterbacks that today they played, let's be fair to them. They're sitting there in the last couple weeks and they're saying, hey, you know, I'm not getting a chance. I'm running the scout team. I'm not going to get much of a chance to play. And here they're thrown in against tremendous defense like Texas. Almost caught by colors. There is a flag down at the line. Here's the effect the narrower goalposts in part have had on scoring in the Southwest Conference. No longer is it the score at Will Conference. Only three teams are scoring more points than they did last year. Six are scoring fewer. And in the cases of the number one and number two predicted finishers in the league, Texas and Houston, they have suffered the most. In Houston's case, uh, much less due to kicking than the... Uh, a lot of people, they lost in the offensive line. And in Texas's case, it's been kicking. It's been a little of everything on offense. Well, we looked at that graphic that, that was so vivid about Texas this season. With a field goal here and a field goal there, they might even be undefeated with a, a few field goals. Not impossible. Improbable, but it could have happened. The biggest loss has been the nine-point uh, Houston win, which had a touchdown score in the final ten seconds after it had been decided. Personal foul TCU had Texas made a field goal that they decided not even to try. They would have been up by four in the fourth quarter. And they felt very confident the defense would have held up. Well, I just don't think then, then Houston would have been going for a touchdown rather than a field goal. And to drive 70 or 80 yards against this Texas defense, I just think that's improbable. Well, this Texas defense is a minute 41 away from their second shutout this year. They were already the third best scoring defense in the nation coming in. Their highest allowed total was 23 to uh, Houston last week. Prior to that, it was 15 to Tech two weeks ago. David, if, if I just got a, I just had someone wave at me and tell me that Texas Tech has gone ahead of Baylor now, 24-17. In Waco, in the fourth quarter. And intended for Cummins almost. Another Texas interception. Todd Ringo just inches shy in that time. That Tech score, of course, with implications on the Copper Bowl. You have got to think Baylor is bull worthy somewhere. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. A minute 36 to go. It'll be second now. And again, if you have not heard, Miami beat Florida State 17 16 on a missed field goal by the Seminoles by about six inches in the final second. So that should put Florida State in the Cotton Bowl. Wilbur dying chasing down Dennis Larson. 
Bring up third and long. TCU will fall to six and four, three and four in the conference with their winning record sacked away for the first time since 84. Texas will improve to five and four with games here next week against Baylor and at Texas A&M still on their ledger. And for the 24th consecutive year, they will beat the TCU Horn Club. Larson running for his life, and first down yardage to the Texas 47. 45 seconds. This would be two shutouts in four weeks for the Texas defense, if they can hang on that long. Again, I just wonder how good Texas would be statistically if their offense had moved the football like they had hoped it would be. You know, as long as I played, you, the sign of a good defense, you always had a great offense that played ball control and just kept you off the field. That is just not true with this game. Another catch for Blackwell. That's his third today. He is one off the fourth spot in conference history. Nine off the all-time NCAA tight end receiving record. Heck, throw it to him again. <laughs> Why not? That's right. Jim Wacker, send it in. Tell him, say, find 86. I don't care if it's a three-yard pass, find him. One more game for TCU. That's the Houston game we'll bring you from Fort Worth next week. Over the middle to David Lewis. Mercy, what a hit by Chris Rapp, the tight end. Dave Texas with a few starters still in there for defense as they uh, try to preserve the shutout with 19 seconds to go. Wrap one of those starters delivered that night. And our search continues for Tom Penders. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe he didn't realize, you know, the halftime is probably different. He probably showed up at the end of the first quarter. He's got other things on his mind over the season. The executive producer of Raycom Sports is Peter Law. Senior coordinating producer, Johnny Tyus. Today's game produced by David the Hammer Handler. Our technical director, Brad Sheldon. Our associate producer, Lee Friday. And our associate director, Charles Thomas. Please call me Chip Sega. Nineteen seconds to go. It'll be second and five. And TCU will send everybody deep. You would think from the 25-yard line. TCU had one first down at halftime. Then they came back in the second half and have had, I believe, 14 first downs in the second half, but have yet to get a point. Texas looks like they will send everybody, and they do, and he got it off intended for Alvarez. Third and five with 14 seconds. Angel Alvarez out of the Mission High School program, which is coached by Ty Detmer's father, Sonny Detmer, and the quarterback by Ty Detmer's brother, Boy, who they hope uh, they can recruit here to Texas next year. Alvarez will come left. Shipley will go right. Colors and Lewis at the slots. Third and five. All out blitz again. They pick him up pretty well. This one for Colors. Incomplete. Lance Gunn had him all the way. And eight seconds still to go. Well, here comes that field goal unit trying to stop that uh, shutout. And you'll hear the fans, you'll hear them cheer. If they're able to uh, block this kick or have it go wide, you'll hear the Texas fans cheer loudly. Probably the 15,000 that are left. Yeah, if that.
Texas final margin. Well, it looked like it was blocked right up the middle, and we know who are who the two players in there. Drenetta uh, in there, Hunt's in there, Todd Hunt. In there. I think Todd Hunt will get credit for this block, number 94. Look at the penetration. Yep. 